forgotten to put on my phone onto the thing. Neck Ohio, everyone. How are you doing today? It is me, your favorite, setting things up on the phone, Demon Cat. Sorry, I had a lot of technical issues. So if my microphone sounds floopy, tell me. If anything seems floopy, tell me. Because right now I'm just hoping that everything is working fine. It's a D and D day. Woohoo! Yippee! Yay! Taya time. We're gonna go over to the D and D thing. And we're gonna play Pokemon in the corner. Oh. Meet more. Aaron's still finishing, finishing up his intro. Nobody told me I was a. Uh... I mean, you kind of just went right into it, and I. Uh, didn't I want hit. To interrupt. <laughs> hit the. It's okay. Sorry. I think Discord might be having some issues right now. I noticed some issues with the. Uh, reactive uh, icons loading, as well as some other graphics and such on Discord. There might be some issues going on. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. I swear I hit the mute button, though, so whatever. Whatever. Eh, it's fine. As long as uh, Zim and Taya were able to do their own shows without me being interruptive, I think we're fine. Yep. Yeah, because of the, yeah. Because I guess their side decided to actually mute. Then again, this isn't the first time that Discord has decided that when I hit the mute button not to mute me in the last week. It's actually happened like four or five times now, so. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully, it hasn't resulted in any uh, seriously awkward moments that I've seen. No, it hasn't. Thank you for the tip, Cosmo. I appreciate it. Oh, boy. He's doing that to me again. Oh, right. We do have a tip goal today. Yes. <laughs> I was going to mention that. Well, I don't have a tip goal on my side. I gave you a tip goal for your side, but my side is just generic goal here. <laughs> so I guess I could technically count it towards that. But the, the tip goals that we you'd make money, hopefully. All right, I so appreciate it. Shall we get into get into introductions and such? I we're waiting on Taya to get back. Uh, no, we're not. Oh, there's a Taya. Never mind. Yeah, that I was, guess that we should was back before you were, dude. I didn't know that. <laughs> Oops. Hi, I am an idiot. I'm also the GM tonight. Hi, idiot. I'm Shoal. Oh. Hello, I'm Drunk Dragonair. I'm the GM for tonight. I'll be running the game and all the stuff going on. And now Shoal can go ahead and introduce himself first. <laughs> <laughs> I was planning on it. You fool. Good. Oh, no. Uh, Yeah, I'm Viv. I play Shoal Brinecoat. I'm the ranger and I bite things. Who, who next, Shoal? Oh, you guys figure it out. <laughs> Vari, go. Gosh darn it. I, well, I, um, I, um, uh, Vari, I play uh, Fret Signature, uh, the mute musician bard. And, uh, lost, go. Ah. Hello, everybody. I am Key, also known as Carceris, and I play... Last, the Paladin of Arabane. Uh, and I believe Dr. Volt should introduce themselves next. Hello, my name is Oneko Taigo, half demon, half cat, all friend. Uh, I am a, also a streamer over at twitch.tv slash Oneko Taigo. Um, I am playing Dr. Volt, the Artificer. 
I don't know how many times I can say German mad scientist, and I don't know how many times I can say, I don't know how many times I can say German mad scientist, because I've definitely run out of ways to say this. Go Zip. <laughs> Lol. I am Raw Zib, and I am playing as Paint, the sentient, feral, noble uh, African wild dog. He is a uh, kineticist and trippist. And therapy doggo. Therapy doggo is in. All right, I believe that is everyone. I guess we should go to story time with Darren and let Key do the recap. I should really update that to just be story time with Key. That's okay. It's Darren on the front page. But uh, go for it, Key. I keep forgetting how many cheese squares are on this image. Uh, blame Mala. Alright, well, welcome everyone. Last time was session 19, Immortal Morality. Fragments of glass and debris fly into the bakery in the wake of the sound, a familiar scent washing across the gathered recallers. Everyone's gaze tor turns toward the hole where the glass window used to be. The scent of ozone reaches them as their eyes focus on the outside. They see a cloud of silvery mist forming from a canister. Glass turns in a fury, clothing torn and shredded by the blast. His bakery, the haven he had built across countless untimed years, and his team all attacked at once. Something breaks, and he roars out a challenge to the perpetrators he cannot see, drawing up stone and metal into his vapors. Fret sees the silvery fog and pulls up his filtering mask as a preventative measure. Joel slowly sits up and states, Meow, as he draws on his new clerical powers, healing up the most minor cuts and scratches. Dr. Volt dusts himself off, adjusting his goggles as he rates the bomb at a mere 3.5 in quality. Or at least the concussive force of the explosion, if nothing else. Could use improvement. Paint, worried for last, follows the enraged paladin as they charge toward the fog cloud. While he rushes into the silvery cloud, all Ask can see is a piece of paper floating down. Paint, however, pauses as they notice a magic circle within the fog that will trigger the moment it is crossed. Something he cannot stop Last from doing as he snatches up and reads the paper. A large elemental suddenly is conjured from the magic circle, a whirling mass of air in front of the angered and rather unarmored paladin. Those that step across the threshold of the fog feel a sense of dread instilled in their frames. It is the same sensation as being bounced around between the spheres, the sensation of real time. After all, what could happen if they are banished from Twilight? What would happen? if they were killed in this fog of time. Paint gathers whirling currents of wind and blasts the air elemental with wind-wreathed lightning, sending out a gust that disperses the silvery fog. And combat, 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 combat. Highlights including zapping the elemental and at least one solid punch being made to a windbag. Also, the get the uh, magic missile Gatling getting used. Hey, am I being expected to comment on the magic missile Gatling being used? No, sorry, I was scrolling down to get to. Okay, just to, making sure. Resume. No, no, you're fine. He's skipping combat, 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 combat. Yeah, combat, 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 combat. combat. I still combat. need to finish that shirt. Yeah, combat, combat, combat. Another boon is laid upon paint, giving the wild dog the boost he needs to hit with every lightning strike he sends at the elemental. 
Rex hops upon his master's head, holding up his ball and sucking in the elemental. The dregs of the magic that conjured the elemental fall apart, creating a pile of imperfect seals where it once was. A little rubber ducky shaped like a submarine also drops onto the pile. A cursory count by Dr. Volt says there is roughly 30,000 of these imperfect seals now in the street. No, no it, was 20, it was 29,999. Only after Paint decided to nibble one. Note on imperfect seals, usable to upgrade skills, buy feats, or create items. Nothing else. No leveling off this... this money. No learning spells, either. Mm hmm As Volt examines them, he realizes these seals are perfect because they were generated with false experiences. Ah, of course. The memory generation and storage device. He states that he didn't see the elemental coming, upgrading the bomb's rating to a 7. Paint snaps up one of the imperfect seals to taste it. Chol takes a moment to move over to last, channeling positive energy to heal the last of the wounds. Paint worriedly goes over to last, nuzzling and licking at the angry paladin. Last acknowledges Paint with a glance, but otherwise seethes quietly. Fred scribbles out that he thinks they should call the guards. Walt wonders if the imperfect seals and taking them were a form of money laundering, which amuses Fred. Paint, still worried for last, presses against the vapor cat. Eventually, no, no, last... specifically he was wondering if using them to create actual workable things that are would be sold for non-imperfect seals would be money I mean... laundering. Look, I was trying my best to keep up with notes, okay? You're getting a summary. <laughs> Eventually, Last heaves out a sigh and stands straight, allowing his stone and metal bones to drop from his vapor mass. He apologizes briefly for his behavior, seeming to compose himself. Bolt then brings up how they should split the money, should the group choose to keep it. Almost coldly, Last calculates that each of the team will receive a share of 6,000 imperfect seals. A fair split, all said. Paint sends Rex to gather his and Last's share, tugging on Last's hand to drag him into the bakery. It is fixed now, thanks to the group not observing it for a little while since Arabane is forgetful, air quotes, in a manner of speaking. Last chooses to ignore everything else as he removes his destroyed clothing and begins to bake. The others collect their share, Fret briefly arguing with Rex over who gets to keep the rubber ducky, until the foxfolk manages to snatch it up. Uh... Special note, the DM broke at this point due to commentary about a rubber ducky with a red ball in its mouth and nussy. Unless he has broken again. And this is why I made the note. <laughs> Dr. Volt offers to help these imperfect se turn these imperfect seals into items for the group, although it may take him some time given the current state of his workplace and laboratory. Fred scribbles out that he would like a belt that enhances dexterity at some point, if possible. As he considers the current situation, Fred writes out that he'll be at the blacksmith if they need him hauling off his bag of hefty and perfect seals. Which leaves Shoal and Volt to go and get the guard to deal with the crime scene. When the guards arrive, they investigate the crime scene. Fragment not found are informed they aren't the only target that got hit today. A total of seven locations have been hit across the city. Once the guards disperse, things go quiet, allowing everyone to go about their daily work. Fret, however doesn't make it to the blacksmith. As he wanders through the city, his mind wanders off, allowing him to stumble down an alley and suddenly into a throne room. Whisper sits upon the throne, feet kicked up with a wine glass in hand. The Infernal is pleased with Fret's choice to hand over the soul grub to Arabayan. He pulls a white mask from his robe and gives it over to the kitsune. Whispers makes note of his amusement at the current state of Twilight and the issues happening therein. 
Accepting the mask, Fred is told he will need to reclaim something to make the weapon better. While well, Fred is present, Whispers asks if there are any other favors while they're around. Considering this offer, Fred prestidigitates his words in the air, maybe later. Whispers offers tea, and also to meet the child that is his other acolyte. The child doesn't like tea, but he likes alcohol. Fred accepts the offer, getting to have tea with a devil and a vengeful spirit turned warlock. Time, such as it is within Twilight, begins to pass. Blast performs his duty with an uncommon stoicism, even sending Volt an official item request while he works for the guard and in his bakery. Paint splits his time between his studies and spending time with Last, but notices his ward's shift in demeanor. Dr. Volt spends his first week creating a headband of ponderous recollection. One particular day, Last is patrolling alone in Shadow's playground. Something catches his eye. Someone campaigning. This is a very odd place to campaign. The man doing so is short, somewhat ruffled, a little bit edgelord looking. He's almost bland and unnoticeable in descriptor such that other citizens in the district ignore him. Taking pause, Last goes to listen to the man. The man and uh, just so everyone's aware, um, the headband of ponderous whatever the blah blah, it's just your standard intellect headband except better. It lets you, new lets you do knowledge things. Yeah, bonuses, skills, too. The man expresses his displeasure for the current system, speaking of things that last, even as a paladin of Airbane, agrees with. Demanding laws and real punishment to the crimes that have been going on for years. If he is elected, he will fight the council so that each district of the city has a representative. The games will be sequestered off to their own area, and the council to be and council to be dealt with, leaving the real council to deal with real problems. When the man finishes, he steps off his soapbox and addresses Last in particular. He is grateful to have at least one person listen to him, although when he offers his hand, Last avoids taking it out of caution. This man, Alan Exley, isn't even on the voting ballot yet, but perhaps one day. Last eventually offers his own hand shaking Alan's. While the Paladin cannot officially endorse Alan's campaign, either out of propriety or duty, he does offer his support. As Alan smiles a dev devilish politician's smile, he goes back to his soapbox, allowing Last to continue his guard patrol. Shoal continues to do his usual work after his training, and even has his usual customer. When Shoal brings his customer back to their boat, they find the home has been turned into something of a self-serve tea shop. The walls are painted with animated waves. Tea bags, pots, cups, and dishes are everywhere. It seems to be run on an honor system, where people bring in tea or leave money. It appears as though Shoal's customer has accidentally created as some sort of speakeasy tea shop. Although it does have a sign stating that there is to be no speaking, only silence. Shoal makes note to himself to bring a sign that says Serenity on it, also to bring Fret here at some point. Special note, those who do navigation work now have a secret location to recommend to their customers, adding plus one bonus seal per week per 100 seals, perfect or imperfect, increases the seal bonus by plus one per week without limit. And trust me, I do note the upgrade later. When Fret learns of this tea shop, he brings five boxes of ceremonial tea as a donation to the place. Very pleased with it. Speaking of the kitsune, he manages to pick up on his completed task he put in to the recallers. Apparently somebody just had some of the quartz he needs, so he only needed to pay a hundred seals, which he pays the real kind, to the recaller who fulfilled his request. At some point, Fred goes to the world mirror to reflect on his life, and even peeks in on the vixen smith he saw before. 
She reminds him of one of his cousins. One of the non-screamy ones. One of the nice ones. The others also go to the world mirror here and there throughout the week, even last. Fret drags the smith he chooses to reforge his weapon to the world mirror, attempting to show him Sean McTire weapons. Well, he tries, but instead they get to see a sort of video being projected by Sean. Clearly, the legendary smith is bored, but apparently willing to teach the smith how to work his weapons. At least the giant dwarven smith has the fortitude to continue on with this nonsense. I'm going to put this in quotation marks. If you're going to touch my weapon anyways, you as might as well touch it right. Damn it. <laughs> so, Fret and the smith are instructed to visit the world mirror every day for the course of the training. While Paint is in his classes, he gets to do an art class where they do life studies. This means he gets to see each of his friends going to and from the mirror. When it comes to Shoal, he brings over the canvas once he's done, wagging his tail as Shoal looks at the piece. The cat shark looks physically pained as he says, thank you, through gritted teeth, gagging when he gets a lick from the dog. And the note says around this time, Serenity gets upgraded to, have, to give plus nine seals per week. Over the next week, Lass makes a new specialty baked good, the cheese snake, and heads out to the smithies to find a way to upgrade some of his equipment with the seals he has on hand. Fret, being distracted, has made little progress on his measurement system. This week, Pink gets to take a class on social constructs and, in general, how society has been working in Twilight. When the third week of Strange Peace rolls around, the newspaper arrives. The United Newspaper displays that the consensus of Twilight's days per week is 8, and the number of weeks in a month is 5, although this is subject to change. Except for 8 days per week, that's all. However, the amount of months in a year is still nebulous. Last receives a note from the recallers telling him to come to the local HQ. So the paladin, being a good recaller, goes to Captain Tooth. Tooth is confused when only Lash shows up, to which the Vapor Cat states he should elaborate better on his notes. There's a brief back and forth and... flirting? Sort of? Captain Tooth manages to make it clear the team should be gathered so they can rank up and do a rank up mission, of which the captain has two to choose from. Lash brings his team back, Chol taking note of how nobody is really in the bar. Even more shocking is that Betty's, Betty's chair got moved, and she isn't here! Tooth explains the whole rank-up thing in his particular manner, then briefly complains about the lack of people in his bar leading to his boredom. Fragment not found, of course, except the rank-up itself. No reason not to, after they've done all they've done so thus far. They don't need to do the missions right away, but Tooth and Sisfoof go out within the next 24 hours, or, oh, sorry, 24 days or so, not hours. The exploration mission is to a sphere with life on it that is glowing way brighter than it should be right now. Theory is that an apocalypse is happening right now in that sphere. The mission is to find out as much as possible about the why and how safely. The second mission is from an Eclipse Warfront citizen who believes a lost soul will show up in their home city soon. Not wanting to out themselves, the client le leaves an address to find them at. Since that's in last patrol air, uh, patrol path, gosh, I'm word saluting a lot here, he asks if he's permitted to visit while on guard duty, since that'd be efficient. Captain Tooth says that's fine, but is starting to beg for Fragment to do anything violent for his amusement. Soul kicks over a chair, and Paint uses wind to rattle the bottles behind the bar to help Tooth get his fix. With their missions given, Fragment Not Found leave the bar for the moment. At least after Fret finishes the drink he paid for. Foof scatters so, their regular uh, jobs, little... Fret and Shoal performing their navigation work for a few more extra seals. Dr. Volk continues diligently working on the projects he started for his team. During his patrol of the week, Last makes a stop at the location from the second mission brief. 
Inside the building, he sees a table that was set up for perhaps a while now. There's a figure that is cloaked and covered up as much as possible sitting entirely still at the table. Glass takes one of the chairs in the room to sit down, Pink choosing to sit on the floor. The cloaked figure pushes some cups forward, keeping their features as utterly hidden as possible. Soon they recognize Last and Paint as recallers, apologizing for not showing their features. After what they have done, what they have seen, mean, they do not wish to be seen again. The client came from a world ruled by a grand council of mages, and every year is a festival, a grand celebration. A celebration wherein a new grand wizard may be selected. Whether or not a new Grand Wizard is selected, people go missing every year. The client knows from observation that when one member of the council dies or vanishes, a new one is selected. When this happens, someone is selected as a sacrifice, generally at random. The sacrifice's mortal coil is taken from them, making them a lost soul in the process. So long as the client's instructions are followed, Foof would be able to retrieve a lost soul so long as the team does not interfere. The callers are not supposed to interfere, after all. Last asks if there are any threats the team should know about. The client replies that several serial killers are often out during a festival. It's an issue that could be fixed, but it serves the Grand Council's interests. Last attempts to further question the cloaked being, but is stonewalled with an ultimatum. Accept the mission in question after, or he walks off the bridge. This annoys the paladin, who finally accepts the mission as leader of Fragment Not Found. His duty is to the city and its citizens, but he will forestall questions made for the safety's sake, if for but a moment to save a soul. Shoal slinks off to Betty's house in secrecy. The cat shark finds there a concerning sight. The door has been left ajar. Stepping inside, quietly, Shoal finds an unnatural darkness coats the interior of the house. He hears Betty's voice coming from the dark. She repeats over and over. They're here. They're here. They're here. They're here. They're here. Session 20. Back to work. Wah, wah, wah. And we got a little fan art to show. Here, I'm going to shrink Raijin's window here really quickly. Oh, that is the wrong view anyways. We, we want this one in port. Oh, of course, it's not going to work. Hold on. Try this again. I was going to say, oh, hey, it's the Drowish Man. Nope. Work this time? Why, 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 Discord? Why you no work today? Why you be big pain? No be big pain. Important. You have fan art? Yes. I'll send it to you in a moment. Apparently... Discord doesn't want to give me the uh, the link and let me use this art, so... Oh, I see. I know what this is. I'm going to try it like this. Import. Can you work oh now? There God. we go. There we go. Silly Discord being silly. <laughs> Making it bigger. <laughs> oh my god. If you want to see this, go over to our stream. No, it's on the table. It's on the oh, table. Oh, it is. Yes. You don't understand. Paint does not like chairs. Thank no, you, Raijin. <laughs> Classic. 
That's, that's <laughs> amazing. Gosh, that's, that's way more wonderful than it has any right to be. What a great meme format. All right. All right. All right, so we got a, we, we had a little bit of a double cliffhanger. Which side of things did we want to start on? Did we want to start on Betty, or did we want to... No, I guess we have to start on Betty, don't we? I was going to say, I thought we were starting on Betty. We're starting on Betty. Did I have people roll initiatives already? Uh... I don't think so. No. Oh. Well, I as far as I'm aware, it is only Shoal and... Uh, Fret over there. Yep. So I guess, hey, Shoal. Is a, yes. A distance away. And if I recall correctly, currently sprinting. Sprinting. Shoal, what are you going to do? You hear Betty's voice in there. Uh, I'm going to roll a stealth before I go any further. Smart move. I'll put... There you go. My uh, USB that has my uh, stuff was having an issue, and it was closing my uh, PDF. Are you are you done doing that now, Mr. Thing? Yes, you are. Okay, good. I guess it was loosed. All right, that should be. Here's my E20. I don't know where my D20 ended up. It has been. It got thrown somewhere. Uh, there you go. I had a spare over oh. there. By the way, um, FYI, my second game is canceled, everybody, so we don't have that strict cutoff time, at least on my end. Okay. Twenty-three. Oh, that's actually fairly good. You sneak into the unnaturally dark house, and that familiar scent that you remember from earlier kicks in as you press into the doorway. Ozone. Ah, oh, that's not a good sign. That weird familiar sinking into your stomach, the pit of your stomach, the, the settling of time. Avari. Fret watches as uh, Shoal actually sneaks into the building through the front door. Uh, Fret is going to be bonded, minding the No, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? Come back! And such. The as, as he continues running. I'm sneaky, don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm still. Um. I need you to roll a perception then for me, Shoal. Excellent. Dog shit. You are stumbling around here in the dark. At, 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 no, it's still of 18. You are... <laughs> what the fuck, Viv? <laughs> it's still Just a dog shit roll, but it's still an 18. That's a fucking three. Oh, hopefully we're past the 15 minute mark. <laughs> We are. By, we don't oh, have to takes that long. Okay, good. Uh, just to make sure. Anyways, uh, there, there, there might be a relevant typical and Zimstrom people should go donate to. In the meantime, you are still not having the easiest time navigating around this room. You keep on running to objects that are around in here in the dark. You can't quite figure out what they are yet. I'm assuming you're trying to head for Betty. Kind of. Kind of. I don't want to. I, I don't want to like immediately come across her. If if possible, I would like to be able to like make sure. I don't know. She hasn't been turned into some fucking abomination before I go into the room. Understandable. Hey, Fret. What are you doing on the outside? Uh, uh, there's. Let's see. I do have dark vision. Oh, right. Is this, um, is this impeding my vision at all? Is it just dark, or is there? It's smoke? not. It's not natural darkness. Uh, 
This Sorry. is advanced to darkness. Uh, yes, very advanced. Yeah, so... Fret is not aware of this fact. So, um... Uh, Fret's gonna pop a sunrod. Uh-oh. And once he arrives at the, um... The threshold... He's going to toss a th sunrod into the building. Does it do nothing? It just disappears. Because, you know, magical darkness. You're gonna, you're gonna hear Shoal say, it's very dark in here. <laughs> just mental, the, the mental link, it, it dark. Well, I'm gonna give Viv a little bit of chance to actually do something, and then uh, Fret uh, will begin, while still at the threshold, um, uh, try detect magic, detect fiendish presence, um, and d detect radiation. Okay. Uh, you want me to give a uh, Viv a chance to do something before you do those things? Yeah. yeah. If, okay. If, uh, well, I mean, because that that's gonna take three, three rounds. So. Yep, that's fine. Or. Yeah. All right, Joel. So you're creeping closer to uh. To Betty, but you don't want to get ultimately close, correct? Correct. I want you to roll a survival actually to do this. Okay. Your predatory instincts to, you know... Stalk. Yes. Nat 20. Of course. Total, Nat 20, please. by the way, 38. <laughs> That's my nope. second highest skill, nerds. <laughs> you get no guesses as to what my actual highest is because it's obvious. Perception? No, that's my third highest. Swim. It's swim. Swim. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> I'm the only you're, person that ever puts points in the swim. You're stalking around and you finally get a real good idea of what these things are that you keep on walking into. As you walk into a section, you do find Betty as herself, but she looks tired like a person that hasn't slept in literal days. She is trembling. She looks weak and tired as if somebody had tried to uh, fight her and she possibly had trouble. As you move into that space where you can actually see her, you realize the darkness has dropped and you look back and all those things that you're bumping into out there are figures. Oh. What are they figures of? Humanoid figures. People. They They're move? people. They're not moving at all. They're probably just uh, dummies that were left behind to cause intimidation. This was a very intentional means of shutting down somebody with a very strong will. It takes you very little time to realize that Betty is very much bound. Vari! Uh, I don't like that. I don't know I... what I can do about that. Uh, no fiendish presence. Yes, there's magic. No radiation that you can tell. Uh... Okay. So she's bound. Is there, like, a visible magic circle? No, she's bound physically, like with rope. Is there anything else in here? Do I need to roll another perception? You can roll another perception if you'd like. Whether or not there is something here or not, you're not sure? We're gonna find out. Oh, thank God. <laughs> uh, so that puts me at a 31. As far as you can tell, no. It looks like this was just a spot to cause intimidation. Okay, so Shoal's going to relay to Fret that he has found Betty... She's currently tied up, and I don't see anything else. Uh, but you know what? I detect magic. Uh, there is magic. It's not on her. You're pretty sure it's on the darkness spell. You also notice in the room, when you have your detect magic set up, the thing that's allowing this particular area be visible and make those mannequins very visible is a lantern. That also is magic. Okay. Oh. 
So I just have to interject to make references because that's what my brain do. Whoa, Bound Betty. Bam, blam. Yep. Whoa. Yep. Bound Betty. Bam, bound bam. Betty. Whoa, Bound Betty. <laughs> I'll also interject to point out that actually paint has put brinks into swim. Yeah, but what's your swim? Of course, the doggo. Oh, it's still garbage, but he has. He can officially doggy today. paddle. Yes. The dog Meanwhile... wants to be friends with the cat. He's trying so hard. <laughs> he is. He wants to be more comfortable in Shoal's domain. Just to be water uh, elemental so, um... and skate around. <laughs> Fret will, um. Uh head into the darkness to try to get to Shoal. Uh, does Fret, does Fret relay that he is coming in? Yeah, I'm gonna be like, I'm coming in. Okay, Shoal's yeah. gonna be like, ooh, and then Shoal's gonna be like, ooh, spooky. <laughs> Messing with Fret, mean. Fret, you have to bumble around for quite a bit before you manage to get into this little well-lit area. Well, not necessarily well-lit, it's let's say dimly lit. The light coming from the lantern that seems to be hanging from the ceiling has some sort of magical quality to it that allows it to cut through this magical darkness. You're pretty sure that now that you're in here, you could probably find the source to the darkness and get rid of it if you wanted to. As described before, you find a very tired and bound Betty who seems to have been up for days in a state of terror because... This is some sort of mind messery going on right here. Are the statues... The fi are the figures breakable or are they just like mannequins? You'd have to remove the dark side or the darkness to actually figure out what the heck they are. And I'm assuming removing the darkness uh -huh. is going to make them attack. You don't know that yet. I'm going to assume as such because that sounds like some bullshit that would happen. <laughs> well, Fred's going to start looking looking for the darkness, uh, the source of the darkness, because it's usually an object that you can conceal. Yep. And Go ahead and uh, roll a perception. Uh, so does Betty notice us? She. You think she does, but she's definitely been here for a while. She might be a little bit of a mess. And I wish I was there. I want to cast Magic Missile at the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> you work in a lab. Just uh, that is a 20. You're able to find it, as well as the canister, surprisingly, when you're in there. The, oh, the darkness is... Uh, on a business card, so it's very easy for you to wrap up in your hand and close your hand. Um, Fred's going to do one better than that, though. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to um, slide it into his uh, one of his bandolier slots and close close the little tab. As he, the dark, he now has a darkness generating business card whenever he wants. Yes, he does. Okay. <laughs> That is well a, until the spell wears, if if it's not permanent. It, it might be a permanent darkness on a object. I mean, it's been going for several days. Yes. Oh well, yeah, that's okay. And... Uh, Shoulder's going to ready a uh, charge. You're gonna charge one of the figures. Uh, I'm basically gonna wait to see if they try to do anything, and then he's gonna then Shoulder's gonna attack. Gotcha. Unfortunately, they don't do anything. They are armor stands with clothing on them. They're wearing these uh, dark gray, almost black long jackets and trilbies to mimic the agents. Shell's going to go just push them over. Yep, they just all push over. Yep. They've all been pushed over. Then uh, Shell is going to look at the, you know, the ropes. I'm assuming it's ropes or is it chains? Uh... I need you to actually roll a. I that's don't know still... if I can have you roll a knowledge check. Also, that's one it of looks... the most cat things uh, Shoal has done. This thing has annoyed me. It falls over now. <laughs> Do me a favor, Shoal, roll a wisdom check really quickly. Hey, I actually have a better modifier for that now. <laughs> Please don't let me down, wisdom. It did not let me down. That is a 17. This reminds you of the twine that you guys saw in the other world. The one that uh, Dr. Volt had to recreate. This is that uh, tension twine. 
that's wrapped around her wrist. The harder she pulls on it, the harder it is to break. You'd have we... to get this woman to relax. Okay, well, Shoal's gonna Shoal's gonna go up and be like, Betty, 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 focus on me. Good luck. Betty! Betty, I'm gonna tell people where you live if you don't relax. She headbutts you. Ah! <laughs> This is an attack. I am rolling this. I'm assuming an 18 does not hit your AC. No. Does it hit your flat-footed AC? Uh, yes. Then that does hit. Take 13 points of damage as you get this. They're Ow. all around me and I will kill you. Look, I need your I need to get your attention so you can relax because if you don't relax, you can't get the thing off. So, Fret has a solution. That is Uh, Fret uh, is going to begin a bardic performance. Is it called emotion? Fascinate. Oh, oh that fascinate. actually What's your will save on that? Uh, let me see. Um Okay, D20, go uh, flying off there. Let's get you back over little, here. Uh, let's see, we'll save DC uh, 10 plus half the bard's level plus charisma modifier. So that is 10, 11, 12, 18. She will fail that. You have her fascinated. Okay. Uh, also, and, sorry, uh, Shoal, you put your face right up next to hers. I'm aware. <laughs> there we go. I'm trying to get her One to focus performing. on me. To be fair, she's she probably most fascinated. relaxed when she's fighting. She is, but I don't think Shoal wants to survive that. I don't think Shoal can <laughs> survive that. Yes, congratulations. You have her fascinated. So, she is distracted, Shoal. Alright, I'm um, going to attempt to get the tension wire off then? I need you to roll a... Name a check and tell me why you're, you think it's applicable here. Well, I'm assuming it has helped her relax, correct? Yes. As much uh, as she can relax in her current state. Fair. Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, dexterity because Jesus Christ, getting shoulder attempt to do this is definitely going to take some dexterity. <laughs> All right. Uh. Shoal has to be very careful doing this. So you don't have any points in uh, escape artist. Though that uh, it's usually uh, that's for yourself, I... but well, sleight of hand maybe. I mean, it's the same. Uh, that's a uh. sixteen. Give me a second here. I need to check a stat block. And Shoal is just very carefully trying to like get his teeth under it. So he you're it. Can... Yep, you're able to slide a tooth under it, and once you get this stuff to snap, it just kind of crumbles. Okay, so she is... At least her hands are no longer bound, I assume. Yes, you're going to have to roll separately for her feet if you want her to be mobile yet. Might as well. Okay, I will take another... Um, uh, performance round. round. Yep. yep. The exact same roll. 16. Yes, you'll be able to get her feet. Yeah, got, got her free. You have her free. You are now in the room. You can let go of that performance now. She is going to be a mess, though. So what are you guys uh, going to do? Does um, she, does she look injured or just tired? Uh, it. You can tell that she looks like she was in a fight at some point in time, but she looks very tired, like extravagantly tired. But you are currently in a place with time, so... Uh, we're gonna get her out of the house. Uh, Fred's going to continue, uh, performing, then. 
so another round. Uh, all right. Well, then uh, I don't under. I guess Shoal's gonna try to drag her out. Uh? Or uh, no, I get. I know what he can do. He can um. He can sort of like uh bump against her while she's on the chair, so she kind of like goes over his back. Let, let me check to see what you can do with fascinate without breaking it, because there is. Right. Let's see. Uh, um. Well, fast, uh, any potential threat to the target allows the target to make a new saving throw against the effect. Any obvious threat, such as someone drawing a weapon, casting a spell, aiming a weapon at the target, automatically breaks the effect. Um. So, I guess you can move them as long as they don't consider that threatening. So that is entirely up to Era as to whether or not thing happens. Yep, it sounds like Shoal's trying to remove her from the area she doesn't want to be in, so I am going to allow it. I do need a strength check from Shoal, though. Oh, that's not good. Because he is trying I'm to carry a person myself. that is probably not exactly uh, going to be supporting their own weight. A cat is getting catted. That's what's happening here. <laughs> I've, I've guidanced myself. I'm going to need it out. No, that's a five. I want everybody to imagine Shoal nudging Betty onto his back and then suddenly realizing that Betty, the, the muscle-bound woman she is, is way heavier than she looks and just flat the cat. Oh, just flop. Thwomp. Flop. Okay, well, subtracting another another <laughs> round of performance. <laughs> I guess I roll another strength check until I can get yep. this to work. Guidance again. I don't want her freaking out. <laughs> Nat 20. You're able to bring her out of the house where you're able to finally not collapse. And that natural 20 is kind of funny. Because I just imagine <laughs> Shoal just getting the cat look of no. <laughs> this is not how. Shoal goes, no, this is my job. <laughs> I do not appreciate you doing a me to me. Thank you. <laughs> He's just gonna grumble and be like, Betty's gonna fucking owe me, god fucking damn it. Yep, and you're... Frit will uh, drop the Fascinate. You guys get out and the Fascinate drops, and as you do, you can hear Betty take a breath as the non-time, the weirdness of not or being forced out of time finally wears off, allowing her to take a deep breath and then immediately vomit. She better not vomit on me. No, thankfully enough, she is not vomiting on you. Good, because Shoal was going to bite. <laughs> you very well know that she probably needs some level of medical attention after that. After all, you guys are aware that certain injuries can actually follow into non-time here in Twilight, and time is needed. Who knows what she's been through? All right, uh, where's the well, nearest fucking healer area clinic well, hospital thing? Fret will, um... Offer over a bottle to uh, Betty. Is it, is it is liquor? It, a... <laughs> it is Wismuth Salix. I don't remember what that does. It's Pepto. Ah. Yeah. It's it's Pepto Bismol. <laughs> she'll she'll take it. I uh, I don't remember which section the closest hospital is in off the top of my head. I have it in one of my notes. I'm assuming that that's where we're going to pause with you guys, because I'm assuming one, somebody's going to stay with her and somebody's going to go and get medical help. Yeah, uh, I guess Fret should stay with her, considering he's got, you know, arms and legs. And Shola's all legs, so he can just run really fast. District 11, by the way. Oh. Thank you. I do Thank you so much for that. That is... Yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, so where are we Thank at? you so much There's for 11. helping out the channel, I do. Uh, we're at Pleasant... All right, so we're at 14. Yes. So, so we it's are... Not... Look at our dots. God damn, yeah. that is far away. And I know that is an Emerald Academia. Which is seven. Where the hell is seven? Right here. Oop. There we go. You can't see it, but I just pointed at my screen. <laughs> thank, thank you, Viv. Good that job, Viv. So Good helpful. Job. That was so I very helpful. The, I am the most helpful. 
<laughs> Look I'm at these nat twenties, all right. I'm assuming Doctor Volt is working. He, yeah, he's <laughs> probably still going to be at work on someone's something. Yep. Uh, we got last and paint, whom I believe officially accepted the uh, job. Correct. Yep. Perfect. The man is going to do I'm one sorry. last thing. Go, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, Merle, thank you as well for that tip. Oh, and I'd like Seriously, to thank guys, Davari thank and so Zim for the biddies of the big emote. <laughs> right. It's halfway through the tier, uh, the donation goal, correct then, Zim? A uh, quarter. A quarter? I don't know what you put it at, so... I haven't looked. I, I put it at a hundred. Uh, finances are bad. Got it. Understood. The man in the room, after you finally accept his offer, will offer you a note, or what looks like a journal. Leather-bound, well-kept. Uh, he is offering this to last. Hello? Just doing note things. Ah, I'm okay. Fine. Promise. Wasn't sure if Discord broke again or not, because it just breaks sometimes. It I found I that that try. happens if it is not in a window where it is being rendered. I don't currently have it in a window being rendered because I've got a lot of stuff open. I need another monitor, okay? Fair. Yeah, I have to dedicate one of my monitors to Discord right now. I'm not happy about it. Pat, pat to you, Gross. Chris. But last, we'll take this leather-bound notebook, and he's gonna, like, briefly flip through it. It has very precise instructions on uh a building to keep an eye on the signs that a person has been chosen in precise instructions thank you thank you for fixing the number ido my goodness i appreciate you ido <laughs> um it has very specific or precise instructions of where you will find the last or excuse me the lost soul so basically uh since i should probably put it in better english it names a very particular building inside the city that, by all accounts, should appear to be abandoned according to these notes. It should have no windows and only a door. The door should look like it is sealed shut permanently. It should have a chimney. The chimney will have gray smoke every night until they have chosen who they're going to bring in. Then there will be white smoke. Two days later, there should be a, last, a lost soul that should be found in the alleyway behind it, nearest to where the chimney is. You will know that it's happening when you smell the or smell that of rosemary and dead person being burnt. Burning flesh. Grace, it, highly, yep, it highly suggests that you do not detect magic during this time. That might be wise. Uh, gray smoke until the sacrifice is selected, then smoke will be white. Two days later, the lost soul will appear. And that... Uh, you, we will know this has happened because it will smell of rosemary and dead person. Do not detect magic. Yes. And with that, the cloaked man will go ahead and he will leave. His own abode? Who said he lives here? Oh. That's confusing. You know, that's a fair point. He had this meeting space specifically set up for this. I mean, it would make sense that uh, he wouldn't live here where, you know, he wants to meet with us considering he wants all of his identity and everything secret. Yeah. It's just that Last has gotten used to uh, meeting clients in their houses because that's kind of what we've had to do for the past few missions. He... Oh. 
Sure. Are you okay? Sorry, thank you. That's the, the furry thank you as well. <laughs> what? MRI. Furry. Okay, Very I see what he's doing. $50. Vari's not going to tip me because I'm making him suffer probably tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> Vari, thank you so much for that tip. Yeah, thank you, Vari. We're almost done with that tip goal. I don't even have a tip goal. Well, gosh darn it, you should sometimes. Well, I can't give everybody a, a tip goal in here always. <laughs> Dang it. Yeah. Too hard. Like I have But to... no, it's, it's just Taya needs to monetize more. But I yeah, do, I that, don't... That's a... But I don't want to come across yeah. as begging. No. No. Taya, I understand that uh pain way too well. But oh Oh. Well, there Please. we go. <laughs> Thank you so the much. The rest of the tip goal, I assume, was just Matt. Yes. yes. Yeah. That is yeah. the tip goal fully completed. Thank you, everybody, so much. And yeah, I, I very much understand not wanting to come across as begging. But sometimes, when this is your only source of income, you just gotta let people know that you just need help. Especially with how finicky streaming can be as far as income goes. I will say as far as my Twitch income for this month, uh, compared to the last few months, it is about half. Which is very worrying. Oof. Because Twitch income is not reliable, but what can you do? What can you do? Well, the goal has been met. I guess I will have to hit that note when I hit that note. When I hit that note, Eddie. Ha ha ha. Or something. <laughs> something, something, something. All right. Yes, the, the strange robed man, cloaked man, hooded man, whatever you want to call him, has left. Leaving you two there. To decide what to do with yourselves now. He prepared this book very excellently for, uh short step-by-step -step guide to how to find a lost soul on this planet. Hmm. So considering this guy doesn't, doesn't live here, paints uh, peeing on the chair. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Glass is really going... don't like that chair. Glass snaps the book shut and just Gives paint a look. He wags. If this were any other district, I would reprimand you, and technically I still should. It's unbecoming of a guard to def... Shoot, what's the word for it? Uh... It's not... It's not defamate. Not defecate. Defile? You're an Urinate? Urinate? De def sure, defile. It's not appropriate for a guard to be de defiling public property. Defacing. Thank you. Defacing public Deface. property. Deface. Well, uh, I guess Last is going to continue on patrol. Back to patrol? Okay. You go back to patrol. Yep. I can... Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, after after guard work, he can call everybody. Yep. I can tell Shoal and Fret that um, if they get a guard... They can get medics out here, and they can take them to the medic. Uh, Betty is kind of going to be a mess for a little bit. Um, if you guys want to hang around for long enough before uh, 
probably last comes to call you guys. I can give you some uh, some details on the investigation as they see it. Vari, do you wish to churn in the darkness card as evidence? Or are you going to keep it? Technically, uh... you could take the lantern before uh, the guards show up as well. Um... Uh, let me do a self-imposed will save. <laughs> I asked Vari very specifically for a reason. Mm, the uh, the card is getting kept. Okay. Understood. Do you guys wish to hang around after Betty's taken to just figure out what the investigators find out, or are you guys going to leave it there? Uh, Fred will, uh, hang around because he's concerned about Betty. And we'll be, uh, casting, uh, a Cure Light Wounds on her while, while they're just waiting. Understood. Uh, what about you, Shul? Do you want to hang around after Betty is taken, it sounds like, to the hospital? For um... treatment? Soul is at least kind of make sure that she's, you know, getting treated properly and all that. Okay, so you guys are going to focus on her and not stick around for the investigation portion. Got it. I'm I Shoal can't something really... Something breaking. Mm -hmm. One sec, please. Okay. Oh. Oh, dear. Uh-oh. Okay, I think we're good right now. Okay. What? what okay. I, I would One ask. of my devices was disconnecting and was for some reason. Oh. You know, you're not a real streamer until you have random technical difficulties. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, we're not the kind of technical difficulties any normal person would ever experience. This is like your left monitor will suddenly turn green for no reason out of nowhere, and that's an issue that nobody's ever seen before, except for one strange Redditor uh, three years ago. Don't who worry. fixed it without telling you how. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was, going to, I was going to say that it's going to be someone who uh, was on a forum uh, from, you know, 2008, and there's a... Um, um, a uh, mega upload link to the fix... Or, oh, or, God. I'm, I'm going to shish myself because man, I could, I could go on a tangent. <laughs> but, but, uh, yeah, anyways, yeah, Fred, uh, has heard stories about Betty and is thus, um, going to take her well-being, um, more seriously than finding out anything because he wants to be on her good side. Um. Okay, I need another moment. Uh, chat, can you still hear everything fine? The music and all of that? Because uh, apparently it changed the audio device. I can hear oh, it just fine. God. So everything's still working for you all? Okay, good. All right, carry on. Sorry. No, you're fine. All right. Yep, you guys are going to be able to attend to her, to her as she goes to the hospital. Uh, go away, Windows. No, you are not restarting any of my PCs right now. Suck it. All right. What was I saying? Right, you can go ahead and follow Betty to the hospital until she is taken into care where they're going to take it from there and probably ask or have you guys... You guys can wait outside, but they're going to tell you that she will be fine after an hour or two. Uh, Fred, I suppose we'll bond it mind with, uh, Sheldon. So, I figure if one of us should probably hang around here, probably you, because she's your friend. And one of us should go talk, or rather, right at the, the guards. Fair enough. So... Yeah. And I'm not particularly great at investigating. Okay. I'm just good at biting things. 
so. Yeah. Maybe I should go swing by and get Dr. Volt on the way, because uh, this is new stuff. You could also, also get Last Lost and paint. You could also uh, tell... You, oh, you should also let Dr. Volt know that uh, the tension wire that we brought back got used for this. What? That was... That's... That was what she was found with. That's big. That's concerning. Okay. Well. Uh. Yeah. I'm. I'm gonna. Gonna go. And Fred will like just dart out of the waiting room. <laughs> it's all okay, like, oh, I guess goodbye. I, I forgot I didn't tell him that originally. Oops. Also, what was that, Zim? I don't think Zim said anything. No, I didn't. Did something come through? Oh, okay. Not that, that I heard. Oh. I I'm gonna know. blame. I'm gonna blame the potato. Yep. So yes, you're able to make it to uh, the labs where uh, Doctor Volt would be. You guys are currently off in eleven, I believe. No. Yes. Yes, as the hospital would be in 11, so they need to get to Admiral Academia, which isn't far. Nope. Oh boy, the building has definitely changed. Talk about lockdown measures. Uh, you get in the front door and you're met um, with a uh, lock... Go ahead. I am so sorry. Uh, maybe we could take, like, a five-minute break so I can make sure that these issues are resolved. Go ahead, I gotta talk to my roommate audio... anyway. Yeah, audio just completely cut out there for, like, few seconds so all right burb everybody i'm gonna go talk to my roommate so sorry everyone it's okay it no happens. Idea what's going on right now well, yeah it's, it's fine um i'm gonna go make some hot tea i will be right back oh i guess it's break your clock be right back Oh, that's what's going on. Ugh, I hate automatic updates. Oh, did it update and mess with your drivers or something? One of my audio programs decided to update in the middle of all of this, and... Well, audio drivers means they're, tr they're trying to take control of all of the audio and everything, so yeah. Let me get this... Oh, and of course they want me to log in again. And, uh, there really needs to be a setting of do not update while in use. Yeah. Or at least one where they actually respect it. Yeah. Okay, so that's still set up right. That, of course, got changed. What the hell was it before? Why is the music not playing? Okay, there we go. That's not playing. Hopefully you guys can hear the music. Yes? Yes. It took me a minute because okay. it's a bit fake. No worries. Yeah, I have it purposely quiet, but yeah. It's ambiance rather than focus. I am the focus here, obviously. The most important being. Yes, the cute one is the focus. I'm not the not focus. Cute. 
<laughs> Thank you, Taya, for taking that bullet. I appreciate it. You gain one DKP. <laughs> a whole one, not even a partial one. Just, just a whole DKP. Makes me feel very old. Anyways, Zim, I'm pretty sure I wrote a whole song about how cute you are the other night. Zim's muted me. Ah, uh, my headset fell off. What? Nothing about me writing a whole song about how cute you were on Thursday that people should go listen to. Oh, that. It wasn't on a recording, it didn't happen. We're recording right now, right? Where's my guitar? I know I shouldn't be playing because I just got a tattoo in the back of my yep, hand. Yep, 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 yep. Don't you dare. Behave, you Vera. Just, you just got the tattoo. Yes. I, I'm aware I did. Take it easy, sir. Fine. But somebody should totally go clip that song over on Zim's channel from Thursday night, just before uh, we were doing the What If series. Yes, Mala, it, it's there. It'll, it'll be in the in the Twitch side of things, so that way it can be clipped. Oh, Ido's also running off to clip it. I don't think anybody clipped it. Welcome back. Alright, I think I'm ready to get uh, going again. Sorry. You're fine. You're fine. Stupid haircut. For back. shame. Alright, so. Okay, so here's the earth. I'm gonna get this gum out of my mouth. Gum, the thing I chew on because I need to do something. All right, so, yes, Vari, so you find very quickly that this place has changed dramatically since your last visit. You get through the first door into the second area where there is a locked door and a security desk with an actual individual sitting behind it whom you suddenly realize is conjured. This isn't a real person. This is a, this is a conjuration. You realize this well, mainly because uh, as you sure. walk up, you're, the person you're visiting, the reason for your visit, and all that other stuff gets pushed to you in a paperwork format. Oh, that's good. Uh, Fred, well, um, uh, let's scribble out, um, uh, Dr. Volt, um, and, uh, reason for visit is, um, uh, discovery of an unauthorized use of one of his uh, inventions. This conjured guard squints at you until you realize that the squinty face has been drawn on. This conjured person's face. Like a certain character from a certain game called Animal Crossing. <laughs> For anybody that is that level of old. If not, get on my level, nerds. Uh, are we talking Demon like exactly you. like Bianca? Yes, Bianca. What, what were you Demon about? Thank you uh, so mm. much for that tip. And yeah, sorry, was still fiddling a little bit with audio setup settings, but oh. uh, I turned off that particular thing. Everything else should be fine. But it's back now. Sorry. Carry on. Carry on my way, woods. Uh, okay, I'm done. But yes, the, the conjured being looks like they're squinting at you, but they will take the paperwork and then they will slide off to the side and... Hey, Dr. Volt. Yes. 
For the first time ever, you get a little ping. A little thing comes over the newly installed Intercom 5000 your boss put in. Why is it they called the Intercom 5000? Because he didn't get to name it. Because he hired another company to come in. Which has pained him so, you have no idea how much pain it caused him to not just let the scientists do it. But maybe the security system needed an update from an outside source that might be sane. Nah. Yeah, he agrees, but you know, the guards were there, so he did what he felt was necessary. But you hear a little ping that goes, Dr. Volt, paging Dr. Volt. To the front desk, please. You have a visitor. Ping. Oh, well, Dr. Volt shall go to the front desk. I would also like to point out that uh, Dr. Volt uh, will have at least at one point suggested that uh, um, we look into uh, some kind of uh, anti-mind manipulation devices. That noise, that noise that a bunch of crazy scientists make when you suggest that psychic behavior might be real and they get to study it and poke people's brains. I was more talking about something simple like, you know, like some sort of amulet of mind protection, but sure. A tinfoil hat. Literally what I was trying to suggest. <laughs> I mean, both would work, but scientists and getting to poke brains before creating the obvious thing. Fair. They don't get to poke brains very often, and this suggestion might be an excuse to poke a brain. Are you going to deny them the ability to poke brains, Dr. Volt? No. Maybe you should, but... <laughs> okay, you... um, l let me put it this way. Dr. Volt is usually a responsible person. When something but goes wrong, <laughs> he's usually responsible. <laughs> <laughs> X to doubt. Okay. All right, so... Yes, you make it to the front desk. The front desk area has completely changed. There's the actual security desk and the walk-in that you actually have a nice little security badge for, of course. But you get the lovely joy of filling out paperwork because you need to register that you're currently meeting somebody in the front doors. You know that before they can enter, they have to have a very good reason for entering. So it might be easier just to say, yes, I am meeting this person, sign that paperwork. And meet them in the entryway next to the security desk where the weird conjured person with the drawn on face stands. Okay, that sounds like a good plan. So Dr. Volt is entirely convinced that it was not conjured with the drawn on face and someone got bored. No, you know that very well that somebody did a Bianca. Matter of fact, it might become a trope where people draw on it, uh, draw on their face. But we'll 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 cross that bridge when it burns. In the meantime, you walk in and you see a fret in the new waiting area to the building. And, uh, yeah, fret um uh, just uh, already has a scroll down his chalkboard a. Um... A big long spiel of, uh, um, uh, Betty was kidnapped, um, she was in time space thing like the, like the air elemental was, and also she was tied up using your tension wire. Well, given what Shaw has said about her combat prowess, I shall take this as a testament to their combat or to their effectiveness. Also, gee, I wonder how they got set. Fred just kind of does the tentative nod. And then uh, wipes the chalkboard and um, uh, scribbles up. So, want to go uh, inspect a crime scene and um, some devices and stuff. Maybe go beat up somebody. Well, because it was used, uh, because company property was used for it, I might even get to say that I am doing this on the clock. 
Brett has such a, uh, a like a sudden look of realization and then kind of just the happy sparkle in the eyes. <laughs> and does a thumbs up. So off you guys are gonna go. Got it. Zam, do we need to pause again? Hopefully not. Oh, well, that here, really, really... sounds. <sighs> For some reason, an audio device says driver updating. Really quickly on my has... stream, I'll, I'll give I'll give everybody. A... You'll what? <laughs> he cut out. I I don't know if some. Did my audio break oh, again? Oh, uh, no. For me, so I was going to put on my. Oh. I I stopped talking. I I literally stopped talking because it's you started talking. Oh yeah, Era. I think that you were experiencing a little lag there. Anyways, uh, Zip, go ahead. What, what's the? Apparently, the audio driver updating has resulted in. The monitor for my second PC, the one that I, you know, am using tabletop sim on, which, by the way, I won't be able to make any dice rolls for a bit, because um, I can't really see the screen easily, because I'm having a delay on it and stuff. Um, it, it just, there's no feed to the monitor, and I have no idea why. But, carry on. It should be fine. At least the street. It shouldn't interrupt the stream. I'm just working on this on the side, trying to figure out why. Right. Okay, by the way, I posted the song in my stream chat, so y'all can hear the song now. It is now, it's now going to be recorded, too. Because I can play it on my stream. Oh? Yeah. Anyways, um, uh, Frit uh, does also scribble out, um, uh, we should probably go gather up, uh, last of paint also. The show was, uh, sticking around with Betty. Well, considering that it sounds like things are about to, I believe the phrase is, hit the fan, yes, I think that would be a good idea. Okay. Should I just do a flash forward to make your guys' lives easy, or should I be mean? <laughs> well, I mm. I figure that um, uh, yeah, uh, Fred will suggest one of us go to um, Lost House, one of us go to the bakery. And then we meet in the middle. Okay, you want me to make it easy on you. Got it. <laughs> All right. So you guys managed to find... I'm assuming you guys are going to meet up, do the thing, and then go to the crime scene, correct? Sounds uh, who's going to explain to Paint and Last what, or Paint, yeah, I said that right, Paint and Last, uh, what happened? Uh, Fred, we'll have to scribble it out. I mean, scribble yeah, it, it out, I want to like... know what you tell him specifically. Because <laughs> that might be important. Yeah. Yep, gonna, um, uh, let, uh, them know that, um, there was an incident at Betty's house. And that, um, uh, there was a, um, area of darkness inside of the, uh, um, uh, the building. Um, a, uh, lantern canceling a little bit of the darkness in the middle. And, uh, uh, Betty was tied up, um, in the middle using, uh, Dr. Volt's tension wire. Uh, and also there was a lot of, uh, armor racks with uh, clothing all scattered around in the darkness for some reason. It 
The only response Last has to that is... Oh. And he just follows along. But, uh, Fret will inquire, uh, shall we go talk to the guards that have already investigated? Shall we go meet up with Shoal, or shall we go to the crime scene itself? Shoal is fully capable of defending themselves, and possibly even Betty, should the need arise. We should go to the scene. The investigators and guard are likely still there. just gives a thumbs up and starts heading in that direction. Oh boy, so a crime in Pleasant Meadows. Oh, great. A crime scene in Pleasant Meadows. As you guys get there, of course, you know everybody in Pleasant Meadows because they're all the kind of hippy-dippy type nature loving everything's peace love and happiness around here are gathered in a big circle around the house trying to see what's going on and there is definitely a perimeter you guys have to push your way through because things like this don't happen here we're all peaceful kind happy loving people here why would anything like this happen here oh boy when the sanctity of a peaceful place is destroyed then again, Betty is a good example of how peaceful these people probably actually are behind closed doors. But are you really going to consider that right now? Yeah, Last is just holding up his badge. He's not even out of his guard uniform at this point. He's still got the book tucked under one arm. You Please guys... Make way. You guys push your way through and get to the circle. Get past the... Oh, wow, they have... They have, uh... Well, it's it's just colorful rope, but hey, it works, right? They had to do something to keep these people back. Did they attempt to make a police tape? They're using police rope. They haven't decided on police tape yet. But where the hell would they get something like that? They literally just took rope and painted it bright colors for now. <laughs> ah, shit! Uh Almost fell off my chair. Well, don't do that. Hold on. I would oh, recommend yeah. strongly not falling off your chair. Viv, well, you're not to allowed go... to die. <laughs> I went to go put my weight on one, uh, like uh, to like prop myself up as I readjusted, and my uh, the 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 stupid armrest uh, came loose and like moved over to the side. Ah, it's not the first time it's happened. It's not going to be the last time it happened. Reminder to everybody that Viv is not allowed to die. Oh, I'm gonna go die now. Bye. Yeah, you get your butt back here and oh. don't die. In the meantime... Ugh. In the meantime... Yeah, you can press your way through. You could tell that this is still technically an unprofessional outfit because you bring people with and they don't seem to really care about that. The guards that are here. I'm assuming you're gonna ask for a synopsis of what they found so far. Uh, yes, he is. He's not even going to bother reprimanding them for allowing him to just bring people in because it's just advantageous at this point. I mean, they're still working on the whole professionalism thing. Nobody that anybody's brought along yet has caused an issue yet that they're aware of yet. Key phrase, yet. Mm -hmm. Oh, he knows it's <laughs> going to happen. But also he's fully prepared to vouch for the ones that are with him because they're River Callers, and also they are his team. And if they're a problem, he will deal with it. So, uh, I, uh, uh, the two of you should run. I don't have to dignify who those two are, but they should probably run, because I'm pretty sure they are the problem. Yeah, I was going to be like, uh, how are we defining uh, being a problem? <laughs> <laughs> The briefing is uh, fairly lengthy this time, as it's actually handed to you by one of the others. It looks like they have uh, made multiple copies this time, due to, surprise, multiple copies almost always being needed anyways. 
as you look over, it looks like this was an intent, an attempt to intimidate somebody. They're not entirely sure why. Inside there, they found one of the canisters with a longer lasting time than they're used to seeing. It seems that this one was overcharged to last several days. While the darkness device is currently missing, uh, that was mentioned before in uh, by those that uh, found Betty. Uh, they can tell that tension wire was done there. They found evidence that there was a scuffle in a fight. They believe that this was not a small amount of people that was involved in the scuffle. And reports from people in the area was is that there were individuals wearing a gray, uh, or excuse me, the, the triblies and the long coats in the area around, well, what would be officially now five days ago signifying that she might have experienced five, at least five real days of time, if not a lot longer, depending on how she perceived things in the weirdness that things are here. They do believe it was uh, deliberate. They do believe that somebody got injured. They have found three teeth. They didn't know that people could leave teeth behind. It's a real-time area. Wounds you suffer there, particularly ones that you don't just heal up, are going to last. Somehow, I highly doubt the teeth are from Betty. They can confirm that they're pretty sure they're not as well, because they have also found signs of blood, definite signs of struggle, definitely pulled hair, and they're pretty sure that there's a skull imprint in one of the walls. That sounds like Betty. Do we have the methods to test the teeth, blood, and hair against citizen records? Do we even have that? The one guard looks at you and goes, you can test for those things? Would the hospitals uh, be able to test for those out. things? Fret will hmm? scroll out a uh, um, blood biography. So... Remember, you guys, the average median for the people in here is usually medieval. Uh-huh. <laughs> you guys are using words that usually come from the Industrial Revolution or after. You guys are like the 5% of this town. Uh, to be fair, uh, Shoal is not from that 5%. No, he's not, but I'm saying Fret, uh, Lost, and uh, Dr... Dr. Volt are. True. Yep. From the minute people that come from the very sparse communities that ever cross the bounds of uh, into technology land, because most uh, civilizations don't. Usually a plague kills them, because I am subscribing and using that theory. Right. Okay, there's at least one portion of that that we can use. Do you even know that magic, Fred? Uh, Fred shakes his head. Oh, of course not. We might be able to get somebody from the hospital who knows it. Sounds like something that would be useful. I wonder if locate object would work on the teeth. Fred squints. People aren't objects, I don't think. As per the spells rules. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Dr. Volt. There could be some way to thaumaturgically connect the teeth back to the teeth saver in the same mouth of. I would have to take a prohibitively long time figuring out such such a spell, but it is in theory possible. How about an easier question? Could you use them to scry? Brett nods emphatically. Uh, 
Okay, out of character, are there any second level scrying spells? Because that's not the only level he's able to create oh. up to until this point. I don't think... Oh, hold on, let me see. It. No. No, there's no. Not. not that I'm aware of, at least. So... That's something that it sounds like the NPCs will have to handle, but you did give the guard an idea and a way to possibly use this evidence in a way that makes sense to them. Also, you've introduced them to some new terms that a bunch of people are going to be trying to figure out what the hell it is. So, uh, yeah, Last is going to uh, be writing down little side notes on the briefing that, like, a copy of the briefing that they gave him, because he's going to keep a copy. But he's basically going to write down, um, like, for blood evidence, find somebody who can use blood biography or scrying, and for, like, teeth and hair, scrying is probably a good idea. Since, yeah, those are direct connections to someone. He does, however, leave this little note at the bottom that says, such evidence should be kept in a very secure location, as there are probably a lot of bad things that can be done with it. Oh, look, Last Lost is teaching these people about forensics. Mm hmm Forensics, and also, you know, like, curse magic. I mean, curse magic. I think that might be the least of your worries right now, considering how many of these people are probably already cursed. Yeah, but he doesn't want it to get worse. Do you guys wish to do anything else? Because we're in open roleplay slash time skip territory. Because nothing else is going to happen of crucial note in this city for a while. It's going to take Betty's. A f it's going to be a few days before Betty is uh, back to being somewhat okay and being able to speak coherently, there, Shoal. Oh boy. You spend several days in a dark room staring at a bunch of bodies being forced to stay awake and stare at them, thinking your life's in danger and come talk to me. That was that was very much psychological warfare that they used. Oh yeah. To be fair, it's probably because they couldn't it, probably because she was a bit beating her in a fight was probably too much effort. No, it's because she has a very good will save as well, and they couldn't break her uh, mental fortitude to get what they wanted out of her, so they gave up and decided to torture instead. Ah, fair. Out of character so, knowledge, I'm, but... I'm, uh... <laughs> I'm so sorry that I probably circumvented a, uh, what would have been a hell of a combat. No, there, there was no combat there. <laughs> I see. Because I was fully expecting her to be frenzied while she was in the area. Oh no, the, I'm glad you did, because she would have actually started getting violent. Yeah, I figured. I, figured. I, I had set that up for you guys to try and find a non-violent way of doing that, because I can promise you that if you guys had not found a way to calm her down, she would have uh, beat the hell out of y'alls and be <laughs> MIA. Um, Last is going to ask what they've done with the lantern. Uh, it's being entered into evidence, but they do know what it is. Really? Yes, surprisingly, they have managed to identify this one. This was a percentile roll off the thing, and they rolled a 99. Uh, oh. this is a shadow light lantern. Specifically... It will not end magical darkness as the light spell, but will cause shadowy illumination that allows you to see figures and things within a 15-foot radius, no matter the light level. Well, they call it that because it causes shadows or shadows to strand or stretch and bend. Uh, outside the 15-foot radius, it, up to 30 feet, it will apply low light, no matter the light condition. Yeah, since we're in downtime mode era, yes, uh, Dr. Volt will be uh, creating himself uh, some goggles of minute seeing. 
OK. All right. So, anything else? Uh, Fred, um, will I uh, once uh once they're away from people, but um, still with last and such? Maybe maybe at the bakery when, once we get back there or something. Uh, Fred will scribble out. Oh yeah, the uh the darkness. By the way, I found it. And then we'll, we'll pull out the card. Darkness in the bakery. And then we'll put the card back away. Darkness gone out of the bakery. Please avoid doing that. Just said entirely flatly as he looks at Fred. Just was probably in the middle of taking off his guard hat. Brett <laughs> just nods. Oh, not for my sake, by the way. Mostly for yours. Brett nods. Oh, and another thing that he'll be making with the, just a little bit more of his... I believe all of the... Uh... Oh, those were... That was actually real scales. Uh... One second, By the I way, need to go redo math. Okay, you do redo math. In the meantime, duh, are you guys going to grab Shoal from the hospital? Are you guys going to leave Shoal behind? In Fred, less... we'll, uh... Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Fred will uh, uh, kind of just sheepishly note uh, like looking cheap uh, scribbling out uh, so I probably should go meet back up with Joel at some point that might be wise I'm sure Joel is at least a little worried about you and you though ah right but before you go he's going to set down the book with instructions I acquired the details on one of our missions. Fred does an eyebrow quirk. It is a non-interference lost soul collection mission. Fred frowns. I am aware of your displeasure. But it is part of our tenet as recallers to interfere as little as possible. Fred nods. We you're free to look through the instructions left behind by the client in this book when you return. But to note it simply, they are aware that a lost soul is going to be created on their home. We are not to interfere with the process, but we are to collect the lost soul and bring them here. Right, nods. And then uh, scribbles out anything else of note. There will be serial killers active while we are there. Fred does a double take. And then begins gradually having a sideways grin develop on his face. Okay, Era, in the downtime, I've decided to use up all of the imperfect scales I've got. You will be making a handy haversack, I own torch, two universal solvents, and burglar's bracers as well. <laughs> okay. Fancy. And despite their name, they're actually uh, just a disabled device helping thing. I mean, they do allow you to produce a Masterworks Thieves tools once a day, but... Yep, I'm aware of what they do. <laughs> That's why I laughed. Oh. They also allow you um, to take 10 on a disabled device check, even if you're uh, being rushed. Yes, they're great. That's nice. what, what was that, Zoom? 
Uh, I was going to ask, uh, were paints uh, items ever done? Yeah. Uh, yeah, everyone's items got done. Yep. Dr. Volt's is covering himself because he never covered himself. He was dealing with your stuffs first. I mean, he did a few things for himself, like the craft better headband. The craft better headband is a great one. There's also a uh, up my my uh, and it's I, an astrolabe like device that ups your spellcraft by like five or ten. That is also a f amazing for crafting items. I'll need to go find out what that is. Oh. It's on one of my characters. I think I know that later. one. It's a, it's a really expensive one though. It's like ten thousand or something. It is, but I'm pretty sure it gives a you a hefty one, but bonus. It's worth it. Yeah. Oh yeah. So in the future. I just remember my level yeah, five so crafter build character ended up with a plus thirty five due to all those things. Jesus Christ. But um yeah, Fret will uh have kind of just a growing smirk. Um and then just uh in a flowery script on his chalkboard, um uh says, Okay, well I'm going to go uh meet back up with Troll. And then just about skips out of the bakery, looking very much improved in morale. Hmm. Usually you would think that would be concerning. Blast is going to collect the uh, instruction book and make sure it's in a nice safe spot while he gets back into his baking gear just so he can bake something because sanity demands it so at this I... point it's just last and paint in the bakery yep sounds like it it sounds like uh, Dr. Volt went back to Emerald Academia Anything you want to do, Paint? Paint is going to... Uh... Hmm. He's going to go sit on... I'm imagining there's probably a stack of uh, bags of flour in the bakery. Of course. He's going to go sit on those. Uh, refusing to let Last get into them. But why? Last is confused. Why would you stop him from using flour? Paint just look is just staring at last. He tilts his head. Is something the matter? He, he sends along a uh, mental image of Doggo last, but larger and more monstrous, growling at the rest of the party. Tilts his head the other way. Huh. Did I not sufficiently apologize for that? He uh, sends along another one of... Basically, it's... You know, sun goes up, sun goes down, sun goes up, sun goes down. Still the same scene. I see you noticed. Sneezes. There's a quiet pause as he seems to consider something.
All that matters is that we survived. He shakes his head. And sends along an... another image of the entire group, doggo versions of course, running happily through a field together. Is this because I haven't been playing fetch nearly as much? He shakes his head. And sends back along the same growling scene with the time passing over and over. Also, we have new canvas. I saw new canvas, I was about to say. He also sends along images of the last doggo snarling and snapping at the others. Oh. He has a bemused sort of expression. His glowing eyes narrow slightly. You are worried that we will turn on you. He shakes his head. And the image kind of zooms in on last. Uh, the doggo last goes off on his own and just curls up into a ball and you just get the sense of anger and grumpiness from it. I understand. Okay. Unfortunately, you can't exactly fix what's broken. <laughs> no chair, only flower. <laughs> I mean, flower is nice and silky smooth, you know, it's comfy, but... He's doing this to get Lat's attention. Yes. And I think going forward, for the sake of time and stuff, if you guys really don't get what he's trying to convey, you could just say so and I'll explain. Well, that's the best part. But <laughs> oh, I mean, I, I yeah. think I have a good understanding, but... <laughs> you have no one to blame but yourself. It's okay. I, I love this. <laughs> As a person that also tends to play mute characters, apparently, because now they think about it, I got like four or five. I love this shit. So, <laughs> well, this is especially difficult because usually when somebody plays a mute character, you know, they've got a notebook and they write down what they're trying to say. Paint just tries to convey it with feelings and images. Not always. I had a pseudo dragon character that the DM told me that I could only communicate in colors at first. Hmm, fair enough. I, I like it personally, but continue. Paint. Uh. We understand your concern. But this is fine. He shakes his head and growls at you. Last reaches out a hand as if to pet paint. No, no. There's no need for that. Paint backs away. Last pauses, dropping his hand. 
You have no reason to fear the hunter here. He shakes his head, sending along uh, the image of him going up to the brooding doggo last. And you get the sense that he's not afraid. Paint. I speak to you as last. I speak to you as half of something. I am here to ensure the other half survives. To ensure that broken, lost little half makes it. So you will have to live with me a while longer. You may not be happy. You may not like it. You may not like the decisions I make. But just remember that I am one half of a whole. And we are all the same person. The next image that Paint sends is kind of a basically a two headed last Argo, uh, surrounded by the rest of the party and facing off against some shadowy monstrosity. <laughs> And then the one of the heads on the last, you know, the whatever the term is for the two headed doggo, um, snaps at the other members of the party. And that united front kind of shatters, the vision shatters like glass. And it is just the, the two headed doggo alone. And then it's followed by them defeated and dead on the ground. Last leans on the counter and sighs. I understand your concern. But this part was built in order to ensure survival. To work in a group, a team. To, to help the other half. We were around when the other half arrived. The other half has had difficulty accepting that their team did not survive. You have been instrumental in strengthening the other half. You and the others. If your concern is that we are going to turn upon you to cause discord, then you are mistaken. The only thing we lack is foolish hopes. That's for the other half to keep. He shakes his head.
Hi, Rex. Huh? <laughs> you said go away, and I said hi, Rex. I was kidding. Oh. No, one of uh, cable. I, I've been messing with cables trying to figure out what's going on here. Okay. I was just rolling something for myself. A roll was made. <gasps> How dare roll be made in Pathfinder of all games? A <laughs> game that has nothing to do with dice! <gasps> How dare! I love self-imposed rolls. They're always yes. so fun. I do them all. I think everybody does them. Find me a Pathfinder or D. Find me a tabletop gamer that doesn't do self imposed roles, and I show you a liar. <laughs> well, in this case, it's to see if uh, paint actually talks. Oh. Oh, shit. Is the cuss word. Let it be a cuss word. Unfortunately, he is not talking with that role. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. I'm gonna go take my match really quickly. Paint is going to... send along another image of... The entire group, the same scene before the glass shattered, fighting together, and, and coming out victorious. And he again sends the image of one of the heads snapping and barking at the others in a very aggressive manner. And that the glass shattering, and he's standing alone. You're worried we'll go off on our own, or that we will become alone through our action. He sneezes at the second part. I suppose we can't blame you for the assessment. How to explain? That's not what we're aiming to achieve. That fury that you saw is... uncommon. It is still there. We won't deny that. But we are... tempering it. He shakes his head. And shows the scene just a few moments before where he seemed to be very... It... it, it is a bit distorted to, you know, it's from Paint's perspective, but Last was even more grumpy and snappy towards the others in the party. Have we truly been so aggressive? Perhaps we need to dial it back. Paint nods. Last pauses and then looks over at Paint. 
Or are you mistaking the lack of gentleness as aggression? He sends along an image, uh, again, the shadow monster thing, and that getting barked at by the party. And then he sends the group all cuddled together in a big pile. Aside from those who have read my file, you are among the few that know that I am. Lost has a great deal of difficulty admitting this. I don't. There's no logic in it. I was hoping to project confidence. Logic. Less aggressive barking of orders and more better at making decisions. We are recovering. Whether you think so or not, they gesture with one hand at the bakery. This place is special. It is very special. It represents something as dear to us as the mask that we usually wear. As dear to us as you are. As the teammates. To have you all attacked. To have this haven attacked. Our reaction is only natural. If mildly unhealthy. Sends along the next image of the scene uh, of when the explosion went off. And everyone fighting together there. But he also sends along that and afterwards I uh, Shoal, well, doggo Shoal, since Shoal's now got a doggo form. Much Disgusting. <laughs> he doesn't even know yet. And he's still offended by it. <laughs> when we're in a hospital, Shoal is sitting there waiting for news on Betty and just suddenly feels so disgusted. Just goes, the dog <laughs> is thinking about me again. <laughs> Lol. But he's sending along Doggo Shoal licking wounds on last. I'm not licking a damn person. <laughs> Maybe not, but uh, that's what uh, Paint is uh, showing. It's it's the metaphor of healing. Yes. That sounds like work. <laughs> Alright. But he sends along also Doggo Last Lost snapping at Shoal. Snapping at the others. And the others backing away. Is that what you saw? Last seems vaguely confused by this assertion. He shakes his head, but 
resends the prior visions of last snapping at the others in the party. And slowly the group going together as one drifts away. Can I can I posit an assessment of what I think Paint is trying to say? Yeah, go, go ahead. I think we have time. I'm pretty sure what Paint is saying here is that, that he is worried that you're going to snap again in a sensitive situation or even possibly at the party and end up in a situation where you're alone and vulnerable because you're snapping in a bad situation. Like you probably kind of possibly did when the window broke when you shouted in anger because that's not something that Paint has seen before and then ended up blindly walking into a magic circle. He's positing that uh, that snapping is going to put you in a bad situation and possibly by yourself, and he's also concerned that that snapping might come back at the party and hurt them in various means. Yes, I believe and... I got it correct. Yeah. Yep. And oh. that he has been seeing it happening since then. Snapping at the party, snapping at the other, at the guards and such. Oh, like, um, I didn't even realize it at the time, but the whole, um, fret pulling up card thing. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and yet, he acted as logically and politely as he could. So the fact that Payne has picked up on this is fairly impressive. Therapy Doggo is very in tune. Indeed. <laughs> and and in, unless it's been hard to come across... Um, Last does not quite understand what parts of this are not working. As the survivor, he does not understand what part of this does not function. It's not that he wants to be alone or push anyone away, that's kind of the opposite of part of his purpose. He just does not understand why Paint is so concerned when he's actually making a concerted effort to make things function. Because the logical response isn't always the right response. Because leadership takes compassion as well as logic, which is what and, Paint's trying to get across. And technically, you had an emotional response, but are hiding behind the guise or the guise of logic for. Why am I doing this? You very well know this out of or out of character key. I'm gonna. Yep. I'm gonna go and put this away. I'm gonna go throw my empty. Give me a role playing. You guys get the gist. I love how we just see hearing him getting quieter and quieter as he's just yelling across the house, walking Stop away. Stop away. <laughs> Poor Cass is probably like, what the fuck's going on? It's no, Saturday. He knows He knows it's our bullshit. Actually, it's worse because... Okay, so Cass is out getting food right now, but his sister is vacationing here for a week. So she's in the basement right now. Oh, Lord. And I don't know if Cass bothered him. I know Cass mentioned that I stream. I don't know if she... I don't know if she was expecting me to walk across the house screaming at the microphone from a distance. Well, you know what? That's on her. That's that's what we call a skill issue. <laughs> so she's Expect probably down the there unexpected. Right. Constant so she's probably down vigilance. there right now just wondering what the fuck is going on up here right now. Okay, okay, but, uh... I continue. I, I'm, I'm done psychoanalyzing <laughs> this. I never I'm started. Yeah, that, that is what Paint's trying to get across. Look, Paint. I... understand. Functionally, anyway. You do not want my actions to come back to the group, nor do you wish me to end up isolating myself. Those are not intentions. And I understand that this current state worries you. But right now, there isn't exactly a way you can force a shift back. I am um, 
doing paint this? Is, paint is interrupting and sending an image of him going up to the two-headed last lost and giving both a uh, lick on the nose. Both heads. So do you lick one and then the other, or are you licking both at the same time? One and then the other. Okay. Last eyes close. And he moves back to paint. And even if paint growls and recoils, he is going to hug the wild dog. For the record, he does not recoil this time. We understand this is difficult. It is unpleasant. We are flawed and imperfect. We are perhaps as much a mess as the other half. But if you accept the whole, we are here. He nods and sends another image of the two-headed last lost and the rest of the group hunting together. And last lost Barking, though, in this uh, situation, it feels more like giving direction rather than aggressive. And then uh, he, it kind of fast forward to after the hunt is over and uh, some one of them has a wound and the two-headed doggo goes over and licks at that wound. Hmm. I wonder if Stormfront would call us weak. But we prefer that. Discord's being weird. Can you say that again? Ah, sorry. I was being kind of quiet. Huh. We wonder if Stormfront would call us weak. But we would prefer that. This image. It is how we prefer to be. Although... Last smiles, tilting his head to the side. Even in this state, we are fairly uncertain of our qualifications as a leader. And they smile. Paint uh, kind of tilts his head back and forth and nods. Now, may we please start baking? Paint will get off the bag. Thank you. We will make something for you. It would help. Paint sneezes. And his stomach gives a growl. Perhaps more than one thing. No, paint is just always hungry. Yeah, you don't necessarily need to eat yeah. here in uh, Twilight, but, you know, 
Some people eat constantly. Eighty percent of the extra... party in the god. It's just extra good because he's not going to get fat from eating too much. Don't tempt me. <laughs> <laughs> Makes the is going to wake up and have one day where he's fat. Don't worry. <laughs> um, if you well, need to go round. on a diet, Fred, uh, Shul will eat your share. <laughs> just makes Or Fred will offer you a water meal. Are you... Oh, God. <clears throat> oh, God. Wonder you look at Wander Meal, you lose five pounds. <laughs> you now have the starving condition just from looking at it. Evil. Become emaciated. So, things you guys got to discuss. You were given a time that you have to go on this mission from your boss. And you guys probably want to discuss things a little bit more openly. So at some point, you are going to want to meet and decide how long you're going to spend the city before going on your mission and among whatever other things you want to discuss. So why don't I just put you on the bakery on a number of days, however, or how many days does it take you guys to just gather up? Let's let's just ask that question. Uh, I think that... Um... Fret and Troll were probably going to, like, hang around until they were able to talk to Betty. Um, because that seems important. Um, so, uh, hear me out. Uh, y'all could come to the hospital. I mean, that sounds like a good idea. Also, partially because Last has yet to see what state Betty is in. And, you know, Betty is a fixture in our home HQ, so she's important. That is an option. Dr. Volt, are you amicable? Did I? Wow, I butchered that word to death. You got to close rip. enough that I could tell the word you were trying to say. Amicable. Amicable. <laughs> rip that word. Uh... <laughs> Two meeting at the hospital. You guys will be awkwardly in a waiting room. This is fine. You guys have things to discuss. You should probably discuss those things. This is the equivalent of putting a bunch of three-year-olds in the same room and be like, now it's time to talk. <laughs> oh. Right. So, last holds up the book of instructions. Unfortunately, one of our missions is a bit time sensitive. Brett kind of does the eyebrow quirk again. Time is subjective. Yes. Um,. However, the mission to collect the lost soul, well, according to the client, the celebration that we will be dropping in on only occurs once a year on their home. He just sort of flips open the instruction book and starts sort of like reading stuff off from it effectively to let everybody know, you know, the instructions, like, what the building looks like, uh, the chimney spoke, and how the chimney spoke is going to change, and then two days later, the lost soul is going to appear. And there is no telling how long the lost soul is going to remain within the vicinity. So it is relatively imperative that we collect the lost soul nearly as soon as it is generated. Red nods. And I must remind all of you, it is important that we do not interfere. Uh, one and moment, uh... Mistaken introvert, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the comfy box. 
continue. So, sorry. <laughs> You're good. You're good. You're good. I understand we've been a bit... light on following that rule. We haven't needed to worry about it. But this mission is going to put us in the thick of another world civilization. But, luckily, in here, we should have the information necessary in order to create guises. These should help us blend in. And after that, the only worry is the serial killers that will be about during this time. Glances over at Fred. Fred seems so excited for some reason now. And Fred will um, peer at uh, sketches of what the people look like and such. Uh, there are no sketches of what the people look like. Oh, it, um, when you were... When he was talking earlier, I thought that he mentioned that. The, the dude. No, uh, I. Uh, if I said that, I meant distinctly uh, there aren't, because... Oh. You guys have a cough that specializes in this nonsense, so you wouldn't have needed it from him anyways. Uh, okay, I thought the guy told us that he had stuff for guys, so I retract that statement. Yeah, as far as I'm aware, no. This guy absolutely has no interest in telling you goddamn shit about himself. And what he may even questionably look like. Ah, okay. What will likely happen is we'll have Dextral investigate the area. We'll craft guises. And then go down. Specifically, we're going to want Dextral to let us know when that building in particular has started smoke from its chimney. Because that marks the start of the ritual. And before I forget, he taps the warning several times on the page. We do not detect magic on the building. You know, of course, that makes me only want to do it more. I can only assume whatever horrific magic is being utilized that generates a lost soul would be painful to view. I read the Akashic Records! <laughs> Point taken. However, this is part of the client's instructions. Mm, very Unfortunately, well. we'll need to follow them. Well, well really I cannot technically to. stop you, I will be responsible for any of you doing so. Just because the client says so doesn't mean you need to. The client's rules aren't law. Technically, the recaller's law is law. <laughs> but when oh. somebody warns you of something, you know... Oh, yeah. No, he's putting it out there. He's saying he will be responsible because, you know, they're his team members. But he did just say that he can't stop them. Right, sorry, guys, I, I had a call that I had to take. Oh, I'm back. Welcome oh, back. Welcome back. Last was just explaining that we're not supposed to detect magic the, the house. Um, but also, he can't stop you from detect magicking the house. He can only take responsibility for you detect magicking the house, even though it's probably a bad idea. Fred just gives a thumbs up. I wonder what trouble tastes like. Because I sh certainly smell it in this party. No, if if, uh, if he's being told don't detect magic, that, there's a good reason. And it's, Fred doesn't want to be blind. That would is, suck. It is just this house. They are free to detect magic other houses and other places. Just not this one. Not while the ritual is going on. I imagine it would just be a reenactment of a DBZ move called Solar Flare. 
It's like walking in on Frieza in the shower. Ew. Oh god, Frieza's always Gross. naked. <laughs> Why? That's rude. What? Why? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I was making DBZ a bridge references. I, I I know, but still, why? Because why I must make references. All right. Because All right. it's funny. All right. All right. What All you right. never that you never had that thought pop up before? Uh, I've never thought of freezer yes. in the shower ever. Thank you. <laughs> no thanks. Well, now you have. Congratulations. He's not my You're type. You're welcome. Right. Um. So at this point, Last is going to look up and go, So, does anybody know when we're allowed to go see Betty? Brett shrugs. Shoal shrugs. Looks at Shoal. Haven't you been waiting here for them? Hey, yeah. I'm just imagining that's what's been going on is the nurses have been just sitting there looking over at him occasionally like, why is he here? What no, is this thing why... doing in here? It's the why is he still here? Because they know that he came in concerned about him, but they gave him information and he hasn't left yet. Joel didn't have anywhere else to be. <laughs> oh. Why leave? Because nobody said that that he wanted to visit Betty. Oh. Correct. Shoal has not realized his uh, failure to communicate yet. Will Shoal ever realize his failure to communicate? No. We know the answer to this. He's a cat. He assumes he was straightforward enough, even though he wasn't. What part of Meow didn't you fucking understand? Exactly. <laughs> So Last is going to just leave the instruction book with Dr. Volt, because Dr. Volt will probably find more entertainment reading that than Fret will. And he's going to go ask the nurses when they can visit Betty. Because The nurse? <laughs> go ahead. Because they've probably been sitting here for a little while, especially if they're down to discussing brass tacks. The nurses will look at each other and be like, well, we can go ask her if she's up for visitors right now. She is conscious. She's not sane right now, but we can bring people up. She's no longer a danger to herself and others. Mainly others. We don't think she was ever a danger to herself. Just to put that out there, because she has thrown things I very point far. Out, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just go ahead and let you know she's always a danger to others. She's not actively trying to murder people. How about that? Is that better? Yes. Give us a few moments. We'll see if she's up for visitors. One of the nurses will go, and they'll come back after a few minutes, and sh she'll be like, I was very precisely asked who, who's here to see me, who dares try to see me, am I allowed to hit them? I guess those are questions. Uh, you can tell her it's Shoal and his recaller group, and uh, we can fight later, maybe. Uh, no fighting in the hospital, please. No, obviously not in the hospital. She needs to be out of the hospital first. Tell that I mean, to her. I'm not going to win unless she's already here. But that's I'll also go... not a fair fight. I, I'll, I'll go let her know. In a way, isn't getting into a ho into a fight in a hospital the best possible place to get into a fight? The other nurse will reaffirm no no fights in the hospital. Theoretically, yes, but practically, they probably will just kick you out and let you suffer on the street. If we have to kick you out, we've got sedatives. <laughs> you'll you'll be limp in the street for a while. Are they in powder format? Have you ever seen a needle gun? Last just... takes Can... off one of his gauntlets to show off the fact that he's not made of fleshy bits. 
The nurse pulls out what looks like a double-barreled shotgun with a hypodermic needle lump put into it, and then clicks it and goes, Oh, honey, your lack of skin doesn't stop this thing. <laughs> Puts Gauntlet back on. You sound like somebody I knew. That's not comforting. When you meet people of Twilight that refuse to be treated properly, sometimes we need to take extraordinary measures to keep them in calm and in line. And this here uh, Fred, uh... was called a shotgun from somebody's homeland. And we modified it, and it's kind of fun. Uh, Fret scribbles out on his chalkboard, I, I like her. And then, uh, down one line, um, writes, Hey, can we be friends? And point, uh, points his chalkboard at the, the nurse. She, she writes out, or she asks, In your free time, do you do stupid things? Or do you do reasonable things? Fret shrugs like do, do you go out and watch shows and you know maybe have a reasonable amount of alcohol that doesn't have you crawling in here on your hands and knees because somehow you got alcohol poisoning in a land where you don't have organs uh fret does scribble out i haven't done that one yet have you jumped off of a building several times in a row until the reality here has decided that you have a broken leg Fred shakes his head. We may be friends. Fred smiles. Because if you piss off reality, reality will respond. I was very afraid that somebody in the party was going to attempt to piss off reality. <laughs> that concern has grown quite a bit now. <laughs> well, no comment. In, in the city, no. Everywhere else, yes. Shola is getting a pet. pet, pet, pet. How dare. Lol. How could you betray my trust like this? The original nurse that went up to speak to Betty says, Shol, you haven't been given permission. She says she won't hit you currently because she's not allowed to. But she's going to hit you and hug you and then hit you again because you're not allowed to be hugged. I have no idea what's this. What's going on? It's just Betty. Are you sure? Because she... oh, never mind. Come on. She's she's usually like she's usually violent. It's fine. Just follow me. Right, Joel sure, will follow. You will get warned that she will jump and that she is very tense as you are led up to uh, the. Go ahead. Fret will move to follow also. Until told otherwise. You will be stopped, unfortunately. By the nurse. Not the one at the shotgun. Frowny. Yet. Oh, Fred only, frowny face. Only show permitted. Just goes only show permitted. Betty only trusts Shoal so far. She doesn't know the rest of the party all that well. Oh. That's fair. And Shoal has also agreed to wear a very pretty pink bow if she has been crossed. Something that there will be multiple paintings of, and it will be spread across the city. Betty does not know how to embarrass uh, the rest of you. Uh, Fret, um, will, uh, bonded mine to, um, uh, Shoal. Let her know that I'll agree to a bow also. I don't think Fret knows about that deal. No. Oh, yeah, okay. I, I could have sworn that we had. Fred didn't. Fred, uh, Shoal didn't bring it up. He just went, "Nope, I'm not taking you to her house." <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I thought you um, explained out why, but I, I see, I see, I see. Okay. No, Never Shoal is not going. No, Shoal will not be explaining the blackmail. He will just be going, "No, I'm not doing this." <laughs> That's fair. Lol. Eventually, maybe you will be Betty's friend, but you also haven't tried to get in a fist fight with Betty yet, so. You know, the chances of Betty being friends with y'all yet until until you prove that you're willing to take a hit from her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pretty down there. I see. Betty has criteria. No, it's called standards. 
No, it's definitely criteria. <laughs> Same difference. She has standards and criteria. Is that better? How does Shoal meet standards? But uh, How does Shoal meet criteria and standards? I figured it'd be one or the other. You submit it to the blackmail very quickly, and she hasn't had to use it. I mean... Shoal didn't want to go fucking find her where she lived, okay? <laughs> That met the standards. You didn't intentionally get in this mess. <laughs> One the way or the other. are very low for people in this uh, town. Also, Shoal's been booped. How fucking dare you? <laughs> <laughs> the cusses are coming. Yes, you'll be brought to the room, and this is the first time you've ever seen Betty jump upon a door opening. She looks so fucking nervous right now. And Shul's gonna just walk in. Of course, her stare goes on to Shul for the brief moment before the door closes and makes her jump again, and she goes, I swear to God, the pink bow won't be the only thing pink if you ever tell anybody about this. I mean... My recallers group knows that uh, you were captured and, you know, brought here. I've explained exactly nothing else. That's fine. Being captured is not embarrassing. The fact that the sound of a fly moving in this room makes me jump right now absolutely is and should never be let out of this room. I never planned on it. Don't worry. Good. Uh, thank you for your help. Why did that hurt? Because you're not used to needing help? Oh, right. I'm usually the one helping, stupid. Hmm. This time it was I, Shoal. Well, I'm not stupid, just to put that out there. No, but you did need help. Unfortunately. I appreciate you helping me. Don't worry about it. Good, because you I think tell her not to push yourself. Properly or partially collapsed there. Oh, bye, Fred. I was mostly just worried when I noticed your chair was not in tooth bar. Somebody touched. She starts to sit up and then goes, ow, 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 my chair, ow, ow, my spine, sitting back down. Got it. That's why they said not to get up. Got it. Heal first, beat their asses later. But my chair has been touched. Look, I'm sure you can pile drive tooth into whoever did it later. It, it'll, it, They'll still be there, I'm sure. In fact, they'll probably be smug about it, so you'll be able to figure out who did it faster. In fact, with how much Tooth was craving violence, it might have been Tooth. Well, Shoal's not going to say that. Or Tooth suggested it to a newbie, who asked dumb questions too often. Oh no. And Tooth is immediately going to throw them under the bus, isn't he? Oh, absolutely. Tooth isn't allowed to hurt his patrons. He can get his patrons to hurt his patrons, though. Yes! He technically said that's Betty's chair over there. It's, it's not his fault that they didn't understand that that means don't touch that chair. Hey, can I use this chair? That's Betty's chair. Okay, uses it. Well, another one bites the dust. The shark craves violence. Who would have guessed? Man. Who ever would have guessed that someone with shark in them is a violent asshole? But they give such great hugs. They do. You don't understand. Shark. Is there anything important that you want to ask Betty? Or are you just doing a wellness check? Uh, bit of both. Uh, Joel's gonna be like, well, uh... Considering you are at least conscious and able to answer questions, you know, seem more like you. 
Uh, what the fuck happened? Welcome back, Rory. Welcome back, Rory. Thanks. She'll sigh, and she'll go into how she had just canceled one of her classes because her students have become absolutely infuriating to deal with since she has nowhere to take out her anger issues with anymore. And the people in that area are just so... just so... just so stupid. For a group of, you know, lovey-dovey, peace, love, love the earth, hippy-dippy types... They suck. Just so bad. So she's been canceling her classes and she got a knock at the door and the only people that come to her door are students because of the only people that would dare come to her door because everybody else is stupid. And now you, who's welcome at her house now. And she says that through gritted, angry teeth like she doesn't like the fact she just said that. Like part of her brain and body just rejected that thought that she has somebody that she's okay with being in her house. I will not come unless invited. Any time is fine. Ow. Why does friendship hurt? Because you're not used. All right, my traveling buddies were even stupid. Either way. She says when she opened the door, she saw 12 men that she didn't recognize. As a matter of fact, she can't recall them to the moment in time. It's like their faces were all blurred. And they rushed in. She remembers fighting them. She remembers fighting them more. She remembers kicking their ass and thinking this was fun. Then she remembers a very sharp pain in her spine. And then be waking up tied up in the dark room with the chanting noises of they're watching you, they're coming for you, they're here, they're here, they're here. She says eventually she thinks that the people that were actually there left, but it was that for several days and she remembers feeling tired but unable to sleep because she was somehow scared and everything felt real for the first time in a very long time. Yeah, so uh, apparently they set up an actual zone of uh, time in your house and left you. She gives that uh, one eye, two eye blink. The one eye goes and then the other eye goes. Like, she doesn't, she is incapable of uh, expressing the amount of anger she feels that somebody might have screwed with her house. Uh, correction. And they also set up a bunch of uh, armor mannequins with their outfits in the, uh, in, in the, in the darkness club. Her eyes go slightly further apart. I knocked them over. If only because they were wearing their stupid hat and long coat. So what you're saying is that if somebody's wearing a hat and a long coat, I should punch them immediately without question. If, if they're wearing the stupid trilby and the stupid detective coat, probably. They, they probably deserve it. They messed with my house. They did. They messed with my doilies. Absolutely. My nice happy little doilies that I put things on because it makes them pretty and they remind me of the things that used to be around in the pretty houses. You get the sense that you're in danger. Uh, this is fine because Shoal has also uh, aimed this danger at the troublemakers. Shoal is just collateral at this point. Yeah, the problem is that she's in a hospital and the moment that she starts to go into the I'm going to break everything in this room, she's hurting herself and you get the lovely scene of watching what the shotgun does. Does it, it immediately been, uh, knock her out? Oh, yes. It's the night-night gun. Well, that went better than I expected. Those that are down in the waiting room get a lovely moment where the nurse with the shotgun gets a message, just stands up, cocks it, and walks away. 
then the nurse is going to come back with uh, Shul next to her, next to them. Because they're bringing Shul with. I bring and, excellent news. And she did Shul not be... suplex me out a window. Or the wall. Or the ceiling. The nurse will also say, excellent news. We have decided that all uh, meetings from here on out with that particular patient until she is healed from her injuries will be supervised to make sure that incident doesn't happen again because we lost a several thousand scale machine out the window. Yeah, I didn't expect her to get quite that mad when I told her what happened. That was... Mightily impressive, though. But I agree. Definitely supervise her. Dear God, please. And that's what this is for. Holds up the sleepy time gun. Uh, also, uh, once she's recovered, I feel bad for anyone wearing a trilby and a, and a trench coat. Why do I have the distinct feeling that trilbies and trench coats are going to be banned from Twilight for a good while? They will definitely be going out of fashion. Probably because um, she's going to kill people with them. Or attempt to. At the very least, they're probably going to get those trilbies stuffed down their throat. Pictures or it didn't happen. I mean, it hasn't happened yet, but I wouldn't put it past Betty. Wait, well, do we have cameras here? I believe at least loves the rudimentary variety. I just need Polaroids. Shul does, that's out of character. Shul does not know what a Polaroid is. That's why he's asking. He's like, wait, Shul might not know what he means by pictures. Oh, hmm. Um, uh, there is the, uh, the one magical item that is essentially just... Uh, a gem that's cre that saves a like saves an image of something. I forget what they're called. Those are yeah, I know. Though. I know what you mean. That's uh, what but... Shola assumes. But no, uh, last immense his statement. Ah, I mean uh, illustrations, or it didn't happen. I'm sure we'll get some. Somebody's gonna witness Betty going on a on an absolute tear when she gets out of here. Uh... On a also terrifying note, uh, I have a standing invitation to her house. Is this not a good thing? Shala's gonna give Last a look. Last leans back a little bit. I mean... it's, it's a it's a look of it's a look of fear, confusion, and. And other, at least one other unidentifiable emotion. Last there's is... some concern in there, too. Last has never seen Shul like that. That's actually concerning. It caused her physical pain to say this to me. Paint's just sending along a mental image of everybody gathered around a tombstone that just reads Shoal on it. That's probably pretty accurate. <laughs> Honestly, that's about what I expect. I, I will not be showing up unless absolutely necessary. It's this weird thing that Betty respects you and she doesn't know how to handle it. And everybody is afraid. <laughs> to be fair, just... Shoal, is, Shoal is very afraid. <laughs> but that's because Fred... Shoal has some brain cells in there somewhere. <laughs> Fred does the pat pat on uh, Shoal's shoulder. Squint. Uh. Other than that, uh, some people with Trilby showed up at her house. Uh, she got into a fight with them. She got into more of a fight with them, and then she got, like, stabbed in the back or something. Some sharp pain in her spine, and then she woke up with a very unnatural fear affecting her. And they were chanting.
And then I told her that, you know, they had fucked with her house and she kind of uh, spiraled out of control from there. Ah, that reminds me. Nurse, has this hospital been approached for uh, guard cooperation? This one specifically, no. Ah, I see. Uh, just to warn you, the guards may be requesting cooperation of the hospitals and the district in the future. Especially when it pertains to, um... Evidence left behind? He tries to put it as delicately as possible. <laughs> you get the nurse look. The, the nurse look of, I've seen people wide open, I think you can say things better than that. It's it's the dismissive oh honey. Uh, like the whole trying... like matching blood samples and that stuff. Yes. Blood, teeth, hair, so if you have anyone that knows scrying, perhaps, or anyone who Or blood biography, I think Fret mentioned. That Fret does the finger guns. Shoal remembered. When we have a request, we'll look into possibly fulfilling it while keeping to our oath within reason. There's this thing from a world called a Hippocratic Oath. We don't know why it's hypocritical, though. <sighs> because I'm going to be honest, I have always wondered that question myself, but... It was because it was <laughs> devised by Hippocrates. Yeah. Well, yes, but why is it the same word as, or basically the same word as Hippocrat? Like they're they're a little they're a little different. There there is there is a spelling difference. They are not the yeah. same thing. It's not hypocrite. It's in hip. It's a uh, hypocritical technically. Yeah, but it's it's hypocrite versus hypocrat. It's hypocrite. It, they just end up getting pronounced the same because Amer or because English. Because people don't know how to actually <laughs> do inflections. Well, also in English, you know, we've got tons of words that are exactly the same anyways. Yeah, read in red. Three languages in a trench coat. Yep. The word set. The word the. No, 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 no. Nothing compares to set. It's got like 70 different meanings. Yeah, but you can also use well, the up. like 17 times in a sentence and it makes sense for some reason. Up is also a word that has about 70 different definitions. Yeah, but paint only needs to know one, Uppy. <laughs> All right. Well. All right. All right. Well, that's that done. Um, I vote that we leave before she makes a miraculous recovery. <laughs> and tries to escape. I don't want to be here for that. Because uh, she, he, he looks at the nurse. She will try to escape, I'm assuming. The nurse reloads the shotgun. Just a fair warning. Thank you for the warning. I'll let the other nurse staff know to keep their uh, calm time friends. Uh, she pauses and then goes, Do not, under any circumstances... Tell her I told you that. Please. You know as how nurses turn are and kind see down the hall as she is just glaring at you. <laughs> <laughs> She's unconscious right now, so it's fine. I, it's I, her. She could absolutely be conscious again already. Yeah, mugs. Yeah, mugs are scary. Mugs can metabolize stuff faster than normal people. Not that fast. First save, she's got like an hour. So you guys realize that nurses all have something wrong with them, right? Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> like there's something slightly evil about a nurse. Because yeah. I've never met a nurse that is doesn't find joy in sticking somebody with a needle. You ever, I mean, you you get this brief flash in their face, like there's this moment where they're considering telling it just for their own si or their own amusement, but it washes away, and the nurse so just happily goes, okay. Thank I you. have somebody that Thank works you. security at a nursing school. I will oh, say, 
they don't start that way. But as soon as they start dealing with patients, then they become that way. Have is you met act, people? Is it actually I, the same thing as being a healer in an MMO? Yes, I think it yes, might yes, actually yes. be the same thing as being a healer in an MMO. You know what? No, at this point, you fucking deserve this. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's, that's why I was like, well, have you met people? <laughs> yes, because I've been a healer in an MMO. And for some odd reason, I like it, which is why I understand why nurses are so bloody sadistic. But at the same time, I still need to warn them that I'm needlephobic and will pass out if you show it to me too brightly, or too notably. At least you warned them. The last nurse I had, the last time I went to the doctor and had a nurse, I told her I was needlephobic and she went, no, wor no worries, I am too, this is why I like sticking other people, just look away now. And I was like, okay, I like this one, she can stay. I believe that's... Uh, I know there's a specific term for being Shattenfer. afraid of needles. Oh, no. Uh, I've always just called it needle-phobic. And yes, this is from a heavily tattooed guy that since the last... Or I got a hyper, or a, an IV put in me less than a week ago, this tattoo was kind of hell. I had to keep on looking away because I kept on having these many moments of, oh my god, a needle's going into me. Trypanophobia. Yeah. Also, uh, pardon me, guys. I have to use the bathroom. I'm sorry. Go we'll use bathroom. Should we take mini break? That's probably uh, a good idea. Everybody stand. Get water, stand, stretch, breathe. I'm going to play the song because it's in my chat. So that way everybody on my stream can hear the song that I wrote about Zim being cute. And I don't have to listen to it because I'm going to walk away. Uh, it's going to be in recording soon. <laughs> Not on mine. Hold on, I got to unmute the video because I have auto mute on. Here you go, chat. Enjoy. I hate the stall blob. Oh no, which one? Clefable! Uh. Oh no. It has Fair. sin I, I and minimize. Where did this come from? Oh, I'm I've been doing grandomizer things while this has been going on. Yeah, he's got like the Pokemon game in the in the corner of his screen. Yeah, something I can very easily, you know, no longer pay attention to <laughs> when Doctor Volt is around and involved. Yeah. Turn-based <gasps> combat. Also, look back. Thank you. Apologies. You're fine. You're fine. It it gave me a chance to go ahead and play Zim is Cute over on my stream, which will be forever recorded and soon on my YouTube, so that way people can hear it, even though Discord apparently really cuts out a bunch of the guitar sounds that I make. Oh. Yeah, Discord is not kind to instruments. Fortunate, but that's fine. It exists now. And now, now Zim can't uh, deny there has been a song written about his cuteness. <laughs> it's not on one of my uh, recordings. Oh, honey, I can get it on one of your recordings. Also, 
Y'all are all cute. All of you. All right, cute. so... So are you. Where were oh, we, yeah. by the way? We just uh, finished being at the hospital. Leaving. Yep. Yeah, leaving the hospital. <laughs> with with, uh, with uh, extreme haste. Before uh, things that may or may not occur occur. Where were you guys going, by the way? Well, after we leave, Last is going to ask if we would like to finally prepare ourselves and go on these missions. Because we're somewhat running out of time on our deadline to actually start them. Uh, Fret gives a thumbs up. I mean, we've got 28 days to actually start them, and it's like it's been a week? Something like that, yeah. 24 days, but yes. Okay. So we still at least have another week. If the team wishes to stay for another week. Uh, Fret will scribble, uh, scribble out. Dr. Volt, do you have any projects that you need to finish? Not at the moment. Not at the moment, you said? Okay. The first part cut out. For oh, me. yes. Not at the moment. Fret will look at the rest of the group. Paint sends an image of his college. And him walking to it. And Paint wants class. I suppose it can't hurt to wait a little longer. That's... He has a different plan regarding all that. Really? I'm curious. Out of character. Well, you'll have to wait and see. Darn it. Uh, well, I mean, if we aren't leaving yet, the least that Last can do is, uh, tell his boss that he and Foof will be leaving soon-ish on a mission. Your boss appreciates you warning her in advance. So it sounds like you guys got a week to kill. Does anybody want to do anything particular other than paint in this week? Uh, Fret, uh, would like to, uh, do some world mirroring. Oh, what about this time? Uh, having, um, uh, been reminded of family, um, Fret's gonna world mirror up, uh, um, uh, New Eden and uh, his closer family. Definitely do that. Also, uh, you're being booped uh, last. Oh, boop. And the adorable sound come up. Yeah, you can absolutely go look at your family. Like, this is what the world mirrors for. Surprise! Anybody else want to do anything in particular? I mean, I guess Dr. Volt is going to be uh, helping people with various brain-related experiments in the meantime. Have fun poking brains. It's amazing how many people are willing to have your brain poked when you're not exactly afraid of dying. That's terrifying. 
Isn't Ow. it though? Hey Paint. You got your college. Yes. You wanted to do something special. Yes. He is going into the uh I cannot think of the term for them. Crap. The person where he goes and sets up what he is taking. Registrar? Yes. I don't know why no, that word came to my actually. brain. That's the one that actually is like, you know, registers you, but not necessarily for classes and scheduling. Either you way, you all know who I'm going to. The office? Yes, that one. Uh, student Affairs? Either way, he wants oh, to sign up for you're a new going course. to... Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that would be your advisor, the guy that... The, the sneaky guy. Uh, what class do you want to sign up for? He is just going to uh, scratch out onto a paper therapy. Let me find that spreadsheet really quickly because I need it. And your advisor will say, sure, we can start that next semester. Did you want to replace one of your things or are you adding on? He sneezes at the second part and shakes his head at the first. Let me add a note for myself here. Do you want a minor, or are you just wanting to take a few classes? Uh, he looks... I'm sure this guy's got his own diplomas on the wall behind him. Mm-hmm. He's gonna kind of uh, look at the, past him at those and raise a paw to point at them. Well, some of these are majors, some of these are minors. Uh, I have two majors. Major means that big thing, and minor means a, a little thing, a passing. A doctorate is a higher level. He sneezes at that one. Oh boy, you're going to be putting on quite the load. Are you sure about that? Sneezes. I will start working out a college course, and you wish to keep everything else, correct? Sneezes. All right. And other than that, that was all he wanted to do. All right. Well, you guys got to. We week are spending the whole week, then, yeah, he'll do the standard you know, 40 hours and stuff. Okay, I'm going to be right back really quickly because food has arrived and I want food. And we'll continue after this. Oh, I want to make one more thing just kind of clear uh, about uh, me doing this uh, Pokemon thing while this is going on. I specifically set it up in a way that... Uh, I'm not having to think while I do it. I'm just having to mash A to get progress for the Grandomizer. Oh no, I understand. I mean, I, I go and do some daily gathering stuff on Guild Wars sometimes during my tabletop, so I, I understand how it is. Oh yeah. I can't say anything myself. It's Nobody like... Can. <laughs> Yeah, it's just idle stuff that you do when you're not active on the scene. Yep. This is part of why me doing notes is a good thing. Yep. So just remember that it's okay to do side things during games, as long as that side thing isn't taking all of your focus. As long as you're still yeah. paying attention. Like, if you can respond to what's going on in the current scene without needing a recap, you're fine. If you need a recap... It's your own issue. Yeah. I mean, that happens to me sometimes even when I'm not doing a side thing. That's, That's different. Fine as, yeah, it's a different thing. It's 
when it's constantly happening. For like <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, I'm just more or less making a joke about the fact that <laughs> ADHD is awful. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I was going to bring up. But there's a difference between that and somebody's so involved in the game that they cuss in the middle of a session. Everybody looks over and then you ask for their opinion and they're, they have no idea what's been going on for the last 30 minutes. After all, I literally can't say anything because there was a D&D session where I was actively raiding at the same time because I was so unneeded that I was just raiding in the background of Final Fantasy XIV. On a call with Vary yeah. and Viv. Yeah, you, you, well, how did you set it up to where you were in two different calls like that? That was wild. Mobile and my PC. Oh, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. There's Good a times. copy on the canvas. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry, no. I may or may not be shoving food in my mouth quickly. Don't give uh, yourself uh, indigestion. Normalize eating become... on stream. Yes, normalize eating on stream and I won't get indigestion. I'm a dragon. I eat things fast all the time. It's fine. I got a big bowl of rice and with some shimmies. I wasn't planning on the rice, but then, you know, there was extra rice, so I'm like, sure, I'll mix it in with the chimmies. Ooh, thanks for reminding me. There's a clearance box of rice in the frozen aisle at my store. I need to grab it. But yes, paint shall become doctor lawyer. Therapy doggo at law. <laughs> doctor lawyer, lawyer, doctor. Hey. It's not going to finish. Is he breaking out for anybody else? Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. he broke up really bad for me. Discord did I? what Gary was saying. It's probably because I'm munching away. I said, uh, Paint's going to be in college for this entire uh, game. This game's going to end before yeah. he's out. <laughs> Yeah, like, um, as, as a, um, instructor at a technical college, the, the concept of what you just started has me internally screaming. Yeah. If somebody did six years of college, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> hey, hey. I'm just gonna point out that time is subjective in this, uh, city, so... He may go off one day, and to him, six years has passed, and for the rest of them, it's only been a day. Okay, but oh, here's man. the important question. Does this not mean that Paint can get this done in less than one year? He can, but man, that's going to suck. No, no, because it's he's, he's, he's a dog. I'm not oh, touching seven this. years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but wouldn't paint miss going home? <laughs> but uh yeah, the um He would. Oh god. The the big the big problem is um uh brain capacity of eventually you're just not gonna be able to shove any more information in. This sounds like a sitcom that happens on the side of this game called Paint the College Years. The oh. intro starts out with Paint packing up to go to college. <clears throat> and goes off and then shows back up a day later in canon, but in, in the in the thing, it just shows all his uh, college adventures for a year. No, 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 no. Paint in the class. And now it has a name. <laughs> Got it. So are we starting a uh, recaller side game now? No. <laughs> oh lord. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> do you guys have a date? I mean, I'm assuming you're gonna go and get Dextral. Yes. Dextral is going to be retrieved from, I guess, the training grounds. Yes, the poor cough looks a little bit more portly than he did before. Greetings. Are you well? 
fine. Uh, assume I didn't get my raise. No, you should have gotten it. You sure? Yes. And this is when out of character people remember that now that that paperwork is never submitted. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure Lost submitted that stuff. I don't think so. Am I wrong? Uh,. Uh? Like, it, at some point or another, Lost submitted the rank of paperwork and made sure to tell Aravane people. I don't recall this. I don't either. I don't recall like, paperwork I, uh, in the first place. I literally don't think it happened. I think it got forgotten. That's I In my notes, I literally have that it's forgotten right now. Huh. It should not have I... been. I, I remember last doing the paperwork. Yeah, like yeah, I, I like I dis distinctly remember it being mentioned at some point while was... things were going on, but I don't know what what all. Yeah, I mentioned that last yeah. was going to do the paperwork, but we never went into detail about it. It was just that oh yeah, he put in the paperwork for stuff. I remember it getting mentioned that you were putting in paperwork specifically to report in and get your finances straightened. I don't remember the re or, uh, Dextral's paperwork getting submitted. Because your guys' rank up is specifically because two thought you are ready for rank up. Not because of any filed paperwork. Does... Hey, chats. Chats, does anybody remember if Last Lost ever put in Dextral's paperwork? It would only have been mentioned almost offhand. Actually, for realism, yeah, this situation with the non-submitted paperwork happens, then cue the Lavender Town music. Uh, I, th th this discussion happened just as I entered Lavender Town. Mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, screw it. Somebody roll percentiles. Roll percentiles uh, to see if <laughs> Okay. It hasn't processed yet. Because I'm not changing my canon right now. That is a-okay. Dexter will shrug and be like, I haven't gotten any information yet. But I assume this means that we have a venture to go forth on. Two of them. We'll be doing them one at a time. The more pressing one takes us here. And, and it here. involves recon on people and civilizations! Oh, thank God I finally get to do something other than be a emotional support brick. Are you yes, I, I thought you might enjoy knowing this fact. Are you telling me you didn't enjoy getting to go see those other cultures? All but the seabound one. I don't exactly like being a waterlog. I'm sure there were plenty of things on the surface for you to see. A lot of water. A whole lot of water. Well... This mission in particular will take great use of your skills. We'll be counting on you. And when were you planning on leaving? Yeah, as a matter of fact. Oh! Uh... 
Well, I guess we're leaving now, then. Uh, Fred holds up a finger. Uh, Fred scribbles out, but I was going to go buy some things first. Or not exactly now, I suppose. Go shopping, I'll meet uh, you Fred by the front gate. Out. When, uh, for everyone else, we need disguise kits. Uh, what, pray tell, are you going to disguise me as? Um, Last seems a bit confused, because we all have hats of disguise. This is also true. Oh, hat of the, uh, wait, I thought there was... Yeah, we were all given them. We, they were part of our starter pack. Okay, yeah, okay, hard. okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Not like having a disguise kit on top of that's a bad idea. Gift. Fred doesn't get. Because sir, I'm standing on his But it's fine. It's fine. Uh, we didn't hear most of that. At least I didn't. I, I heard, heard circum something about bonus. circumstance bonuses. Yeah. Uh, well, my, my connection is going very bad. It is bad storing me here. As someone who loves storms, I think a bad storm is a good storm. Yeah, it is. Unless it knocks out my power, and then in which case awful. it's an asshole. Yep. But yeah, we, we can continue. It's fine. Okay. I know that you said something about a circumstance bonus. Do you care to repeat that? Uh, it was in response to what you were saying as I was saying that. But it might have been delayed. Oh. I mean, you could still go get a, a, a disguise kit. Having a disguise kit does not impede a disguise or a hat of disguise. Just to put it out there. It's true. And it might be useful if we lose the hat. At least for some of us. Yeah. <coughs> some of us... <coughs> It probably wouldn't matter, gestures to self. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, Fred will go buy a disguise kit. It's got hidden uses. Okay. It's 50, 50 scales. Last just asks that you keep track of the amount so we can get reimbursed. Yep. Yeah. There we go. And I assume off you guys go. Off to threshold. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of souls. I mean, I wouldn't call the gnome that Gar or stands by the gate most of the day a wizard. Oh, no, I'm pretty I was sure he's just for the mission. Pretty sure he's just an irritated gnome. I don't know if I would call the wizards that we might meet on that world wonderful. No, we're we're going to meet uh, the uh, the wizard pope. So as per normal, <laughs> you guys make it to the gate, you gotta sign out, and that gnome is there. He eyes a certain member of your party, or a very... Well, he's not even being nonchalant about it. He's he's definitely giving uh, Fret the look. Ah. Uh. Fret looks mildly concerned. It's like he's waiting for something to happen. But if Fred isn't doing anything this time, everybody can just sign out and he'll watch you all leave.
Uh, Fred will, um, uh, pull a, a stone out of his bag and, uh, offer it to the guy. The guy squints so heavily. And he goes, why? Fret shrugs. He has decided not to take it because there is an inherent danger of that rock or that stone. Who knows what weird thing's going to happen if he touches it. Fret looks so sad. He's waiting to be pranked, but it's not Fred coming. Put it back in his bag. No, it, it, it was Fred was uh, just offering him a whetstone. I know, but he is expecting you to prank him because <laughs> we tried to prank him several times, and as a gnome, he knows. He knows. His yeah. prank senses were tingling. Yeah. Because he's a gnome, he expected that to be a prank, and the fact that it wasn't makes it worse. But he doesn't know that wasn't yet. Yeah. Um, though it's kind of funny, legitimately almost all of the pranks so far have been, uh, turnarounds of his own pranks. Pranks that he doesn't even want to do. He just does because he's expected to. The gnome gnomes. Oh. Oh, Fret, uh, suddenly, like, does the raise one finger looking, uh, um, like he has a sudden realization. <laughs> Uh, pulls a rubber ducky out of his bag and sets it on the table. The gnome's gonna back away from it like it's a bomb. <laughs> Paints grabbing the ducky. Choo it's squeaked. Choo -choo. Oh no. The gnome still looks terrified like the du rubber ducky is going to explode and then does the shooing motion for you guys to go on your mission already. That that whole you get 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 out of here get thing from the from the as far away from the rubber ducky as he feels he can be. <laughs> Fred just waves farewell. Bring a rubber ducky to my presence! How dare! So you guys are going to bounce to this particular star. And this particular star, when you get there, actually has a very awkward blue hue as you get to the edge of the sphere. I assume you're going to send Dextral off <clears throat> to do the investigation for you while you guys stay out here. Can I ask something? How how does a blue hue become awkward? Uh, because it feels like a cool well, color, it, but it it's actually making warm. Clear. Ah. Seeing blue shadows is weird. Oh. And you could probably also roll a knowledge, if you cared to, Dr. Volt, on why this may be important. Okay, give me a second. Uh, how about, uh, knowledge planes also? That will be acceptable. Eh, yeah, that's not the best roll I've ever made. Um... Yeah, that is, is only. You're still gonna get a thirty. It's only actually an eighteen. Actually, what? not good enough. Mm. Also, Fred, don't forget to add an inspiration point to yourself. And people that have low HP, feel free to go ahead and uh, re guidance. Your self HP. Guidance. Enjoy your plus one. Oh right, we left. Do we get an inspiration? Yes. That's why I'm reminding people that you should have at least one, if not two, inspiration right now. I have two. All right. And to, yep, you know, so... fill your HP bars. There you go. Okay. Um, well, uh, Fred's going to burn one of those inspiration to um, re-roll that, because that's, okay. that's an awful roll. Okay. I want to know. Uh, it's not letting me update. It's not? Uh, try re oh, it refreshing the tab. 
Yeah. I've been refreshing and it's... You might have to close it and reopen it? Here, let me see. There's dash. There it is. Here. Have a new link. That link is just giving me a white okay, screen. Okay, so that's a 16. Uh, 16's not gonna give you much. Here, let me try. I'll do a force regen. Try that, Link. <coughs> yeah, unfortunately, I'm sorry. No to the 16. There it goes. The downside to having garbage. Yep. My rip, sorry. Fire. Yeah. I still heard him this time, at least. All right. <clears throat> As I clear my throat. <coughs> Ow. Don't die. Nope. You guys, you guys are out here in what? Is the or bathed in the light of the blue star at the edge of this or this sphere, looking in as Des Dextral will go ahead and take himself in, leaving you guys once again the outside. I want, I believe everybody in here is technically a caster, correct? Yeah. I want you all to roll a percentile, or excuse me, a perception, not percentile, perception. Bet. Is Kineticist actually considered a caster? Yeah. Technically, yeah. yes. Oh, uh, only a seven, guys. Twenty-nine. So that's, uh, okay. Twenty-twenty. Twenty-two. <laughs> Twenty-four. 20 22, 24. I meant perception key. Flat ah, okay. And then, uh, Tyago, what'd you say yours was? 29. I think everybody's gonna get this one. Uh, oh, right, I have it. Uh, 16. Okay. So everybody but last and lost is going to pick up on this. I'm sorry, last. Okay. Uh, as you guys are out there, you guys notice that there is the arcane casters, specifically in this party, seem to have some sort of trail pulling off of them, and it takes you guys very little time to realize that this light from the sun is actively pushing arcane energy away from it. Oh. This star is shedding arcane energy. <clears throat> That's... Probably bad, right? At the very least, it is certainly abnormal. But if I remember from the notes we were given, that something, something, mages do not happen naturally within this world, well, I think we may have found a reason why. Do you guys want to do anything specific while you wait out here for this time? Um. Hmm. We're just sitting out here waiting, right? Yep. Paint will nom on one of the treats that uh, last prepared. Shola's gonna pull out oh. some dice. Shola's gonna play a dice game. Joel's just gonna roll a dice around, or a die around. Oh, he's doing he's the cat paw at a dice. Yep, he's just he's just smacking the uh, a single die around. 
last full set, prepared cheese snake. He's going to cut it into slices for everybody. I was about to say, you have Shoal's immediate attention. Uh, so, Fret is going to, um, uh, just kind of have a seat on the, um, uh, kind of the threshold of the spear. And, uh, just, um, pull out his katana and, um, hold it up to the light of, um, uh, radiating off of the spear. I see. Just watch how it interacts. It's going to take a while, but it will also exhaust. Just like you do. So you guys wait the 24 hours. Nothing in particular happens other than this exhaustion. This weird pressing out seems to not be too bad on you guys, because you guys are natural casters and know what the heck you're doing. Well, if you weren't aware of this particular pressure, some of you might be losing spell slots right now. But thankfully enough, the party rolled high enough to notice that this is happening, so you can guard against it fairly easily and not sit here and have your magic blown away in the astral winds. Wouldn't that have been funny? No. But you jerks have to roll high on me, and I can't have any fun. What did you expect? So we... So we retain prepared uh, spells and such, or...? Yes, you're not actively going to be uh, losing spell slots what, for the time what, being. what exactly are you... Okay. Specifically, I had it set where if y'all didn't roll a good perception check, nobody would notice that you're exhausting or having this effect happen against you guys. And we was going to start sending out secret messages about how many spell slots you guys lost today. Yeah. Yeah. But no, everybody has to roll above a 20 except for last. Squint. I mean, to be fair, last is new to the having magic thing. True. Specifically, it was only going to affect the arcane casters. Oh, Shell's not worried about that then. So that would be um, uh, that would be just Volt and uh, um, yes, Fred. Uh, Fred. Yep. Because because we've got psionic and divine. Otherwise. Yep. Still, that would have sucked. Oh, is that what uh, kineticist is considered? Psionic? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good to know. It's it's as close to psionic as it can get because it. Uh, I think the explanation, at least in the books, is you effectively have uh, an elemental gateway. Yeah, something like that. I'd have to reread it. <clears throat> One way or the other, Dextro will come back after the 24-hour period, and he offers over, quite proudly, a notebook. Uh, Fred mm -hmm. will enthusiastically take the notebook and begin flipping through it. Oh, you brought him right into his element. He doesn't only has sketches of the primary race, which are slightly hunched forward type humanoids that... You're not sure where every Omnivorous, you're pretty sure that these were uh, Carnivorous. You can't really stick it to a particular animal, but you can tell that they're still hunched forward. They wear some level of clothing, but detailed sketches of their pets as well, as well as other animals that are around, as well as service animals, as well as doodles of the current festival going on and the culture. This is, this is like a comprehensive guide that is ready to go, including mannerisms, politenesses, and specific notes that seem to indicate that people are kind of jerks to each other around here to watch yourself, because apparently this is a culture that believes that if something bad happens to you, you probably fucking deserved it. Hmm. Dextral has your back on this one. He's got everything you need he looks quite proud of himself well dextro all praise 
Yeah, sorry, words. <sighs> All praise where it is due. Thank you. This will be excellently helpful down there. Good, hopefully it'll get me the promotion I asked for, so that way when I seed, I don't seed awkwardly. I really would like to have some branches. Instead, I'm just getting round. I could swear I put that paperwork in early. Then again, with everything going on in the city, this doesn't surprise me. But let me know when you're done with your disguises. I will bring you all down. They do have money. Just bear in mind that it's interesting. Last holds up a hand to just sort of stop Dextral for a moment. Were you able to find the building that we indicated? Oh, quite easily. It's way off in the slums. Fairly easy to find, actually, as it's the only solid stone building in that area. Everything else seems to be made out of junk. Was the chimney smoking? Not currently. I, From what I witnessed, the smoke only happened at night, but it was not smoking white. It's there is a large fair going on, though. So long as the smoke is going at all, then we aren't terribly too far off. So it should be safe for us to go down. Possibly. Uh, I do recommend uh, getting your hands on some money, though. The Those left in the streets don't have a very good time at night. I figured, given the information we were given. I also may recommend against detecting for evil. If what I witnessed gives me any good vibes about who is good and who is not... He says to the paladin who can do so at will. Hey, he's trying to warn you. Oh yeah. Uh, Fret has a um, a delighted gleam in one, uh, in his eyes as he begins opening up his uh, disguise kit and beginning to uh, prepare it to uh, help aid people with disguising. Yep, bear in mind that Dextral does give a bonus to all attempts to look like or imitate these people's uh, sociology at any level, so... This includes disguises and or what have you, the rest of it. Right. Do you want to roll your disguise? Fret? Uh... Yeah. But, um, also everybody gets a plus two from this, and this is what, one, two, three, four, five uses of it? So half of, half of my disguise kit. Yep. And since we know what their beasts of burden and their pets look like, we have suitable disguises to use for paint and shawl. Yep, so it's up to them. Do they wish to be pets or do they wish to be beasts of burden when they go down? Joel hates this option. Pink <laughs> wants to look at the sketches. All right. And study them closely. Any particular details you're looking for? Probably something close uh, to a canine. I mean, shrug at least his own size. Getting to your size is not the problem. Getting to something canine is a little bit more questionable. You're not exactly sure what the pet-like animals are supposed to be, but... I guess these people find them cute. At least they're about the right size. It's better than the, the beast of bird, and most of them look like donkeys, except if they made them to oxen. Paint will uh, put his paw on one of them. Oh no, new canvas. Oh no. So what you choosing, Shoal? Are you going to try and walk around in your hind legs for a, an entire adventure? Absolutely fucking not. Shoal does not have the spine for that. So do you wish to be a pet or a beast of burden? 
probably a pet because Shoal is not going to be a beast of burden. Lol. It's just going to be an abnormally large cat or some sort of feline. I guess with his little disguised doodad. Oh, poor Shoal. He doesn't have to be a dog. He doesn't have to be a dog yet. Shoal will immediately uh, get himself rejected from the sphere if he has to be a dog. <laughs> Aww. Thankfully enough, the animals that you're seeing as pets here do not classify as one or the other, as far as you're concerned. They are strange creatures that are probably closer to a, to a, to a Martin than anything else, really. Even then, that's a stretch. Yes, that was a pun. Acceptable. Barely. <laughs> I don't know. I think Raijin has decided you're going to be a beast of burden. <laughs> Raijin. <laughs> I do not appreciate it if I'm being made into a beast of burden. Raijin, you play a dangerous game. So to be fair, Shoal is a bit more a uh, beast of burden sized than they are a pet sized. Correct, but Shoal is also not a beast of burden. Have you ever seen an Irish wolfhound? Outlier. Alligators. They aren't in Florida. No, you can get them in South Carolina. <laughs> you you can. But they're Yeah, they're everywhere down here. Well, not quite as everywhere as Florida, but I could I could probably go off into the woods and find one. Well, you shouldn't have them as pets, just saying. Oh, I mean, but obviously, if you're a terrible Raijin pet owner. Hi. Who says hey, hi? I'd... Raijin says hi to Viv. Trust <clears throat> me, I can see it. Oh. <laughs> and you're pulling Shrek. <laughs> Oh, jeez. I'm not touching this one. Moving on. Let's go. I'm going to put a head um, out for Raijin's hands. Okay. So, so Paint and Chill are both choosing to look like pets. Yes. Uh, Well, before he gets started on his disguise, or Fred starts on disguising him, mm -hmm. Last is going to ask where Dex suggests we should get our money. Dex shrugs. Then says, if you're brave, you can always try thievery. Stairs. Dex puts a hand to his chest and goes, It's not my fault that we don't have good way of accurately, without mimicking and stealing from them, their money, without literally stealing from them. Remember, when we leave... Anything from the world remains behind, except for a few select things. <laughs> Joke's on you, Ra Raijin has paws. There you go, Shaw. He has paws, not hands. Okay, so, um, with all bonuses included, um... Uh, Shret is disguising at a plus 23. Is that Goodness. with the head of disguise? Yeah. Okay. People get ready to write down your numbers, because these might actually be, or this might become important. Okay, Shret's doing himself first. Extra little quip. Would you rather me to go down and try and get some money for you? Could you even do so undetected? Probably not. Then it's best you stay out of harm's way. I'm just saying, if I saw something like me in my mortal life pop out and make a jump for me, I'd probably just scream. All the more reason we should probably keep you here. As entertaining as your suggestion is, 
We would be ill-advised in putting you in unnecessary danger. Or have you perhaps swapped personalities with one of the other cough we were looking at all those days ago? Oh, well, trust me, I have not. You asked me what I could do about it, so I gave you an answer. It's not an answer I actually have any interest in doing, but... It is an option. Well, Paint is studying the pay, the uh, the notes that uh, Destro brought back, by the way. Yep. He's looking for plants now. Specifically trees. There's... Why? That is a good question. <laughs> Why? Dextral hasn't really given you too many notes on any plants that they're not eating. I know why. I'll leave what? it as a surprise. But go ahead. Nope. Nope. I won't say anything. I mean, if you know why, I'm curious if you know what it is. Um, well, I mean, what do cough disguise themselves as? They look like big old shadow trees, don't they? Oh, I thought that was just Dextral in particular, not every single one of them. Yeah, all of them. Mm -hmm. They're they're Drake shaped uh, dark wood trees. I was unaware of this fact. Yep. So that's no, that's not why. <laughs> oh well, I mean, the only other reason I can think of is uh, so Paint knows the things he's allowed to be on. Nope, that's it, isn't. <laughs> Well, then I'm stumped. Barbary, what are you what are you getting for numbers right now? I am posting them in uh, um, game. Uh... Are you? All right, let me look. Channel thing. No yawn. No tired. Oh, Kenku, I'm tired, thank man. you for that resub and your 20 months of support. But no tired. Uh, Out of Disguise is plus 10, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm taking that into account. Oh, you're rolling for all of us because you're Disguise. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> uh, because I have a plus 13 to begin with. Unless somebody has better and wants to do it. I don't think anybody else has better. I don't think anybody else has the skill. Okay. Wait, I'm um, looking at the recallers of the last game related. I'm not seeing it. He hasn't posted it yet. Oh, no, okay. in, in the... Uh, it's in the tabletop, Sam. No, I've got it in... In the tabletop sim. Oh. You do? Oh, I don't have access. I don't have that chat on. Uh, um. 27, 30, 27, 31. And this one is. Uh. Oh, son of a gun. 37. 37. For paint. Paint, you're the best. Well, paint's gonna ruin it right away by going and peeing on the tree. <laughs> nope. I actually don't know why he wants to know about trees so bad. Everybody make sure to note down your disguises because this is your disguise unless it is changed, removed, or updated. This is important. Do you have any other questions before Dextro brings you guys down to the city? Um, how badly is uh, Paint about to get mauled? He is uh, pouncing on Shoal.
What? Are you sure about that? He's getting into character. He's seen uh, pets behave that way. Oh, no. Viv has gone silent. This is a bad thing. I'm debating exactly what I'm going to do to paint. No <laughs> killing each other in the nothing, please. Well, if I can't kill paint, that significantly lowers what I can do. So instead, uh, Charlotte's going to bring out a bag of caltrops. Oh, oh no. So what is that? A deterrent. Please do not waste resources on such a thing. Squin. We might need those if we get chased. I have more. We might need all of them if we get chased. That's what the marbles are for. <laughs> and the marbles. Look, if we need all of that, you guys fucked up enough that I'm just gonna go as fast as I can. But just imagine, sending an assailant tripping over so they fall into all the cow tops. Yes, but I have several bags of these. I have a question about these marbles. Uh, what is the volume of these marbles? Uh, supposedly enough to oh, fill a wow. with square. <laughs> Sorry, but, also, what I was yes. but also, yes, loud. They scream loudly. <laughs> <clears throat> It echoes. Okay, I'm going to bed. <laughs> you started this era. I technically did not. Yeah, you did. I just allowed this to happen. So you started it. Got it. <laughs> it's your fault. Okay, okay. Actually, I do have a mechanical question. Yes. Um... So, Paint did get that uh, thing of intel or constitution. Does that increase his HP? If your HP is, or if your bonus to it, constitution has gone up by one, and then your HP would go up by one for every level. Okay, even though it's a magic item causing yep. it? Yes. Yes. But if okay. you lose that magic item or something dwarfs it, your HP goes down by one for every level. Yeah, okay. So you just lose. The, you would just lose the bonus if you lose the item. Yep. Wanted to make sure. My roommate is calling me. Yep. Dear oh, client. No? Oh, no. It's Rodney. I don't give a shit. He can message me on Discord. <laughs> oh. Viv, you're such a kind friend. I have to live with him. True. And he eats my ice cream, so he can go fuck himself. Wow. Any any other uh, questions, comments, concerns before you go down there? Uh, Fret will uh, scribble out. Um, hey, Dextral, I have a book that um, you should probably hang on to while I'm in this world. He will head Don't tilt. Read it. He'll look concerned. I guess I can hold on to things for you? Uh, Is it another one? Book out of his bag. It's the danger book. Fret nods. Fret scribbles out. I don't know what would happen if um, Astral Wind was to um, do things to it. Fair. It is arcane magic. I'll make sure to keep this shielded best I can, then. Immediately shoves it in the shadow cache. There. 
that gives a thumbs up. Are you all ready? As ready as we're going to get. Fred gives the second one, though. Remember, everyone, first order of business is finding some money. Actually looks at Shoal and Paint. He deeply what? regrets what he's thinking right now. How dare you look at me like that? He's not saying anything. Going once, going twice, and sold. He'll gather you all up, and he will bring you guys down to the sphere. When your guys get pulled out of the shadow in a back alley, you guys find yourselves, well, in the alleyway. But you can hear the city streets not too far from you. It sounds busy. You can hear the sounds of a festival going on. The music, the people shouting, the booths. And it takes you little time to look over and see how busy busy is. This is a country all gathering in one city, and boy is it packed. Shoulder to shoulder in some areas. You see people walking through the alleyways occasionally, just trying to avoid the hustle and bustle. You can imagine why murders happen in this kind of situation. Some of them are probably not even intentional. You smell food, you hear music, and everything is moving. Welcome to the fair. Good luck. Oh, random flavor question. So, uh, with disguise, what does Last Lost look like? Is he just a dude in, like, a really heavy armor? That's vaguely up to you guys on how you wish to flavor it specifically towards your characters. The hats of disguise do allow you to change race as long as you stay within your category, or I believe it's one size smaller. <clears throat> uh, random flavor question. Nacho cheese or Cool Ranch? Cool Ranch. Cool Ranch. <laughs> um... If I could get the, the dill pickle, I would. Sour cream and onion. Talking about Doritos here. Oh. Well, I mean... Eh. The body is But first order of business, what do you guys want to do? Dextral does very quickly ask when he thinks he has the moment to do so. Do you guys wish me to stick near, or do you wish me to go poke at things? Hmm. Don't stray terribly far, but I won't constrain you to my shadow. Fair enough. Just remember, if somebody's rude to you, be rude back immediately. And matter of fact, just be rude first. Ta-ta! Man, you really you really should have let Shoal be a humanoid for this. He'd fit right in. It's funnier to make the rest of the party do it. It is. I'm too good at it. Glass just puts his hands on his hips and sighs. Wonderful. Well, I can always relay. Uh, I can always relay insults to Fret. Well, it would be helpful if you could throw your voice. Then Fret wouldn't have to worry about not having his own. Well, I uh, I wouldn't even know how to start to learn how to do that. Arrow, what would uh, I need Fret to do that? Bluff check. Out on his oh, that's never gonna happen. Chuck, or the ventriloquism. Well, I know what it's called, but... There, there's a spell. Can I learn that? Mm-hmm. Trill... Do-do-do-do-do-do-do. Uh, do, 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 do. Get here. Nope. Spell. I cannot learn it. You can't throw a voice. You don't have one. 
Yeah, sure you can learn it. You just have to buy it. I think we'll find a way to get Fred's voice back one day. Alright. So, yeah, uh, Fred just kind of puts a, puts a hand the scabbard of his katana and uh, just kind of decides to just stroll in the, um, wherever the, the alleyway leads to. Take so you're point. leaving, so you're just uh, leaving the alley and walking through the crowd? Uh, well, of course, so one hand on weapon, just, uh, just in case. Understood. Are people following? Uh, Shoal is. Yeah, the moment Last notices this, he just starts walking after Fret at a bit, a brisk pace. You guys push into the crowds. It's bustling. You can hear people hawking their wares from all over the place. Definitely smell that food. People themselves don't smell great, though. <coughs> but what do you expect <sighs> in a giant festival like this? Any particular destination for you guys right now? Yes, any trees nearby. From this area, surprisingly, no. Okay. But Paint is keeping an eye out for trees. I'm aware. Weird ass dog. Uh, are there any Guidestone type locations? Information booths? Mm -hmm. Uh, it is not hard to find somebody that's hawking maps. Which we would need money for. Yes. Which we do not have. Currently. Well, um... Let's Roll see. perception, though, for me, people. Okay. Twenty-one. Uh... 24. Oh, no, 22. Uh, 16. I didn't know you could load. Uh, that 25. Word, but... That's a, that's what we called the Nat 1 era. 25. I see. 15. It isn't hard for all of you to already start to determine something very interesting. Everybody, despite being shoulder to shoulder, is acting a little bit on the shifty side, something that was noted by Dextral, as well as all the merchandise that people are selling is either in the seller's hand or is in some manner or fashion locked down. In other words, this is the kind of neighborhood that has bars on all the windows. Well, yes, because, you know, if you don't lock it down, it was deserved to be stolen anyways, and it will probably disappear. Hmm. Lovely. Which is both a good and bad thing. It means that if you manage to steal something... Even if somebody sees you do it, no, they didn't. But on the downside, everybody's got their guard up. Well, um... Fred... Uh, is going to, um... Uh... Uh, bond... Find... Robot. Yeah, and tell him... Bump in, well, or, sorry, uh, bump into one of these map sellers and distract him briefly for me. Sure. Shoal is gonna and then just... uh, Fret will uh, 
uh, wait until, um, uh, dude is distracted, and then, uh, try to snatch the, uh, uh map out of a dude's hand. Okay, really quickly, thank you so much, Toshime, for your six months, appreciate ya. Um, considering hey. that I have actually put points into a certain skill, Dr. Volt is going to aid another with this. Hey, okay. Uh, guidance. Good to know. By the way, Shoal, when you bump into the man, does a... I doubt a 13 hits okay, your flat then. Absolutely not. Good, because he straight up goes to boot you. That doesn't even hit my... That doesn't even hit my touch, AC. Nope, but he definitely tried to kick at you, and not nicely either. Go ahead and roll your aid another, or uh, Taya. Go. I rolled a natural 20. What's your total, Taya? Yeah. <laughs> that, that would be 25. Fret, roll yours. So, a sleight of hand. That was weird, but okay. Um, okay, that is... Okay. 12 plus... That is a 26. Understood. And let's see if he notices. No. He does not. You're going to be able to grab it and run back into the crowd very quickly. Much to the man's chagrin who cusses and sa or shouts Steve and nobody gives a damn. Because obviously he deserved it. Uh, is there anything I can knock off his table real quick? You can just knock over his table. Uh, I do so. He's going to try and kick you again. He whirled worse. He misses. What else of his can I knock over out of spite? You have a chair? He does not have a chair. He had the table and everything was locked onto it. Uh, yeah, so Fret will, um... Uh, I'm back gonna, to I'm gonna take... I'm gonna do, like... You could... Hmm. You, you could try knocking him over. That would be like a bull rush, right? Yeah, CMB. I mean, his stats are shit enough, I might be able to get away with that. But, uh, yeah, uh, Viv, you're gonna get bonded by the... the quit, quit fucking around, come on, I got the thing. He started it! Technically, he didn't. Technically, you started it. I did not actually. <laughs> There's no technicality about this. No, no, no. no. no he, he attacked first, therefore, he started it. <laughs> you got in his personal space. I'm a cat. You, you, you don't have personal space around me. Back. He doesn't <laughs> know what a cat is. Cats don't exist yeah. here. They got the weird pet like era, animal. Era, era. I fail to see how that is my problem. Are you going <laughs> are you going to try and knock this man over or not? Sure. Roll your CMB versus his CMB. Go for the ankles. Where's my dice? Where did I roll? There it is. Eighteen. Not enough. Really? Yep. Does a 20 hit your AC so he can finally kick you? No. This poor guy. <laughs> 27. Yes, you knock him over. Are you going to run away now, or are you going to keep on fighting with him? <laughs> I'm scampering away now. I got what I wanted out of this. Good, because that poor guy's uh, stash is going to be totally torn apart and stolen now, because he's down on the ground and can't stop anybody from stealing from him. That sounds like a him problem. He shouldn't have kicked him. He didn't uh, actually given, successfully um, kick you once. Given what's going on, uh, 
Dr. Volt will help himself to some of the money there. <laughs> Roll a sleight of hand, please. <laughs> I mean, if it's all, if everyone's going to be trying to steal from it, I mean, well, I only got 10. Uh, you get one of their coins. And now you discover exactly why you, why uh, Dextro was warning you about the coins. This is obviously a tooth. Their money is teeth. You don't know what kind of creature it came from. It's probably not one of their own teeth, but they're using teeth as money. I didn't realize we were going up against Warhammer orcs. <laughs> oh. That's right. I forgot that they told me about that. It was such an extraneous detail, it just didn't come to mind. Just out of character sidebar, yes, the teeth money thing was mentioned. I just forgot about it till now. Again, when did. The, why are we dealing with magic using orcs from Warhammer? To be fair, most of them aren't. They have to do super ritual things to use magic. Same difference. Is there skin green era? Uh. Navy blue. Do they speak with any sort of a Cockney accent? Actually, yes. Orcs. <sighs> Spectacular. Also, not intentional. I know absolutely nothing about Warhammer 40k and I have no interest in it. It's not even Warhammer 40k. It's just orcs in the Warhammer universe, including fantasy. They use they use teeth as a uh, currency. Uh, but, okay, you may not care about Warhammer, but you still got to learn about the orcs because They're the orcs the are... Obviously. They're soccer hooligans. Uh, era, um, let me ask you this. Uh, if you were to be some sort of uh, stealthy orc... What color would you go for your armor for? Uh, obviously neon orange. Do I, you're actually, like, not Close. terribly far wrong. Uh, it's purple. Yeah. Because have, you ever, because have you ever seen a purple orc? Yeah, of course. <laughs> that and when you're stealthing as an orc, you don't roll a stealth, you roll an intimidate. I'm hiding. That guy's hiding. We can't see him. As long as okay, you know that you, the way you say that, uh, you, you're actually not wrong. Because do you know how they make their vehicles go faster? They paint them Shall red. Do they add, at least add flames? Because of the flame decals actually make it faster, not the color. That makes it go even faster. That's, that's uh, yeah, yeah, but I mean the, the red the red ones go faster. I mean, he's not wrong. Yeah. The yes. There's nothing there. wrong about that statement. If, if they believe it, if they believe it enough. It becomes real. Whether or not this is detrimental to them, by the way. <laughs> and they yes. have no control or basically knowledge of this fact to begin with. It's it's even funnier because there's a bunch of conspiracies about how the Emperor is only alive because the orcs think that he can't die at this point. And like that that they they as they go up in rank, like within their orcish army, they get bigger because obviously the biggest one is in charge. Well, obviously. It is, like, entirely the stupidest logic ever that results in them being incredible. Small, arrayed from Superior Combs 663 also, they, uh, with they, one viewer. Even one of one their is enough for a spaceships is literally party. just a giant rock. Welcome aboard, banana, bat, party It's popper. called the Ragnarok. Alright, now we're moving on. Yeah, let's, uh, I've, I've got yeah. to thank uh, Superior Comb. Thank you for the raid. Welcome. Thanks. But yes, enjoy, we... enjoy this detour into orcs. We're now moving on. Congratulations. You have one tooth. So you have one monies. So can I just say, just, steal teeth from people, beat them up, take their teeth? Where's That's a good pliers? question. You don't know where their money comes from right now. Where's the where's my pliers? Gosh darn it. I keep a pair of pliers in Anyways. my book bag, Vari. Um yeah, uh Fritz uh oh. reading the uh, valley to inspect map. Is everybody following the 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 person that just totally stole a map? Yeah. Durr. Yeah, why not? 
I don't even... As I'm teasing last. He didn't steal the map. He just took it. And clearly the guy deserved it, so, you know, it wasn't stealing. Obviously he deserved it. We looted the map because he started the fight. Personally, I don't see why we don't just find someone who is being a colossal dickwad and mug him. The reason for that is because that would adequately describe a large number of the people here, I assume. Which means we have our pick of the litter. I mean, the paladin could always uh, cast a deck evil. Vari has a it's free lovely, real estate. Vari has a lovely map of the city. The map is going to go ahead and show the majority of the fairgrounds and where most of the things are going on. You can see where all the games are, where the events are, where the people are being hung publicly for entertainment purposes, probably for whatever crime that they committed that they actually consider a crime and whatever is going on in this crazy city. Among other things, the music and the dancing and everything else. By the way, don't cringe at public executions. That was a thing that was literally a picnic worthy for many years. For most cultures. So. As terrible as that is. Yes. I mean, mm -hmm. you think Shoal's going to care about that? Nope. Oh, this entire place just rubs last the wrong way. Just Excellent. He, yep, he's just doing his best to not be obstructive to the mission. That's okay. You have the three gremlin members that are more than willing to be a problem. Uh, to, to put it bluntly, right now, Blast is just effectively the hired muscle bar bodyguard. It's funny because you're literally a paladin in the evil city. Oh, he hates it. Hopefully nobody has detect good. Uh, so, it's not oh. even the evil thing that gets to him because technically he's lawful neutral. Uh, Wait, is it lawful neutral or neutral good? No, he can't be good anymore, so it's lawful neutral. Uh, Yeah, it's yep. just the sheer chaos that's getting to him. I mean, that's just a busy city in general. Meanwhile, Shoal fits right in. So, uh, Dr. Dr. Uh, Volt will explain to Loss. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Of the alley. All right. Um, Dret in the quiet of the alley. Mm hmm. We'll begin casting a spell. What? Uh, ears of the city. Um, with the subject matter being murders. Uh, 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 can you send me that spell again? I need to look at that. Okay. To remember all it does. Go ahead and explain your thing, uh, Dr. Volt. When lawlessness is the law of the land, then to follow the law is to be lawless. That's a cute philosophy, but it's still chaos at its core. Exactly, but we're not allowed to change it, so... No, that's understandable. Our directive here is not to change the society. We're merely here to collect a lost soul. That does not, however, as he turns his head to look out into the crowd and probably sees a mugging occur. Oh, you definitely see somebody get their lights punched out. All you know is it looks like somebody bumped into somebody else and they just cocked up and punched. Just done. And then continued walking. And this is considered normal here. That does not, however, mean that I am not displeased with this place. What is pleasing is that the rest of you seem to be in your element in some fashion or another. After all, it's not the leader's place to always be front and center. Okay. 
Yeah, so... Um, you cast the spell on the initial cast. You definitely get the flashes that you're looking for. A whole, whole lot of them. This is a really easy place and time of year to, you know, make people not live anymore. Or be visibly living, or... Look, it's a lot easier to get away with when there's a giant crowd of people. After all, things happen and people just disappear here, and nobody questions it, right? Okay, um, that is... Uh, let's see, to start off... A... 19 for the first one. Mm-hmm. A 30 for the second one. Chimney. Okay. And for the uh for the third one a 25. Roll 3d4 for me so that way I get the hours out of the way. And then I'm going to have to tell you some things in private, I think. In the meantime, also, oh, leader. Hey, would, would one of you all uh, through 3D4 for me? Because I'm old. Somebody please roll for Vardy. Oh. Uh, that was not a roll. That literally just slid. Uh, that's a four. A four. Jesus. And a four. Okay. Good to you know. Got three fours. Jesus what is your Christ. What is your plan now, by the way? Oh, uh Fritz's plan? No, everybody oh. else. Oh, he's gonna be you're, like You're busy. Yeah. What plan? Yeah. I ain't well, got no direction for what you guys are gonna do now. This is all you guys now. You're behind enemy lines. For the first time on your own. Honestly, this is kind of the opposite of how last society worked. Uh, well, he's not quite sure how to move easily. So his first thought is find a base of operations. Even if that includes having to make one out of an alleyway. <laughs> All right. First things first. We need a place we can return to. Somewhere we can be relatively undisturbed. Preferably somewhere that isn't terribly far from our target. Hello. Okay. Oh, uh, Fred. Uh, Fred is not a part of this because he uh, he's blank. Like he he looks like well he he's unseeing, but his eyes are open. Fred, Fred's doing the magic thing. Yes. Viv, I stole that and throw it my, through my server. Oh, the cheese, the the greater sword. Yes, you're welcome. This strikes me as the kind of place that would have some sort of local 
carrion bird. You know, like crows or something. Plausibly, why for? Uh, Dr. Volt just has kind of an idea. You might want to explain the idea. Uh, Doc, uh, um, first off, I'm going to make a perception to see if I can see that there are any, like, crow or crow-like creatures around. Okay. Why am I afraid this is going to lead to a pun? No, this is not leading to a pun. This is actually leading to an idea that Dr. Volt has had. Uh, that is a 25. As far as you can see, yes, you definitely see bird or signs of birds uh, up in the roofs and what have you. With as packed as things are, they don't seem to be interested in coming down right now. So they're indifferent, you say? As far as you can tell currently, yes. Excellent. That Okay. Dr. Volt's going to be working on a, on a thing. Oh, da da da, do da da do, ba da da ba, where's the thing I'm looking for? Uh, you so said, you said they're after... indifferent. I'm concerned. And what were you about to say, Fred? Uh, after uh, a brief amount of time, uh, Fret does snap back into being aware of his surroundings. And hastily begins scribbling out. So, I found a location that we're going to need to uh, target. For things. Okay. I assume you'll explain. Uh, Fred, uh, scribbles out, do I have to? You could just point on the map, if that's fine. Uh... Fred will kind of peer back out of the alley and get a... kind of a rough guesstimation of, uh, the current location. And then does a little bit of mental math. And then points a location on the map. Uh, <coughs> off to the side of the fairgrounds. Alright, Eric, I need to know. Mm -hmm. Are any of these birds within 30 feet? Not currently. Are you Damn. looking at the same spell I am? Uh, mine is a class ability, not a spell. Ah. I know what Viv's Viv, doing. No lately. horrific gorging. That's not a class ability. That's a shoal ability. Okay, I'll I'll be I'll be uh, complete uh, completely straightforward with this at least. Um, the spell Doctor Volt is looking at is animal purpose training. Ah, see, uh, I, Shoal was going to use wild empathy to increase their uh, to try and increase them from indifferent to in, perhaps liking us a bit more. I mean, bring them food. They're birds. Great. My party is going to train the animals to attack the people. Got it. Yes. Uh, attack? I was just going more with steal their shit. You're going to teach the birds to rob people. Got it. Yeah. I mean, if they're if if they're anom if they're <laughs> analogous with crows, they probably already know how to do that. So it's fine. <laughs> fly, I mean, my pretties, fly. <laughs> I mean, this is this is. Thing that's happening one of my favorite is... things that actually happens has actually happened was there was this man who fed crows regularly and then one day the crow one of the crows came with like some money and so the next day he gave them better bread and the crows recognize this fact that they bring him the paper they get the good bread and they so, started bringing him money on the regular. So just as a heads up, if you start to feed animals like crows or ravens or what have you, they will start bringing you things. Put out a dish for them to put that stuff in and they will. 
please do not take any coins from them because it does encourage them to steal and they will actually attack people for those coins and bills. Leave those things in the dish. They will take them away on their own. That is legitimate fact. So yes, I'm aware of this being a thing and I see what you're doing and I'm like, God damn it, they're actually going to fucking do it. <laughs> Understood. But Fred has circled the location it seems to be, or seems on his map. It's all yes. downhill from here. A location on the outskirts, yeah? Yep. Alright. I suppose we'll head there first, if we have no other plans. Given that one... He just sort of flicks one eye to look over at Volt. Tooth will probably not oh, get us lodging. Uh, Fred uh, does. Fred uh, scribbles out hastily. Oh, right. Also, we don't want to be out of, uh, at night. Like, not at all. I would wager that this has to do with us, what we were told about. Be wary of serial killers? Fred kind of halfway shrugs and like um, uh, tilts his hand in one, uh, one direction and the other. Uh, very noncommittal looking response. Is it like guard people? The Fred guards shrugs. just go around looking for people to kill? It wouldn't surprise me. Uh, Fred, uh, uh, scribbles out, no, the serial killers operate at dusk. Ah, lovely. Principled. <laughs> he says, dripping with sarcasm. Very well. We'll head for this location first. Who knows? Maybe you all can convince me to evict some unwelcome tenants from a building or something. Fret not. You guys go ahead and Hi, cat. Thank you. That is my new tattoo. Please never do that again. Ow. That Ow. next time. Ow. <clears throat> Not that he did it intentionally, but ow. Oh. He doesn't always was not use Was it the love claw. bite or the claw? It was the, claw. I'm going to put my paw on you, but I'm going to use a little bit of claw because I want your attention right now. And ow. Yeah. The claw! All right. You guys go ahead and make your way through the these crowds, and as you guys get to the outskirts, you notice that the amount of people drops down, but the amount of alcohol being sold is going up. Very significantly, in fact. Or at least you would assume it's alcohol. It's some sort of alcohol-adjacent beverage. It is something that they are drinking, and you can tell that there's a couple of these people that are probably intoxicated or whatever they call it here because they're stumbling a little bit. You can see that they've let their guards down. There's a couple that are just completely knocked out on the ground. Or do they have anything on them? Not anymore. You're surprised that they have anything covering their loins. That's <laughs> actually uh, another option uh, Dr. Volt could work with, I think. Uh, Fret will just uh, scribble out and um, show it to the rest of the group. Uh, we should find a spot to hide. I, mean, I wasn't thinking that. I was thinking about creating an enhanced water device. I have create water. We'll be fine. You guys could technically sell alcohol here. Yes. I can, I can go steal that guy's table. 
If one of you creates water, I can at least convert three pints of it a day into alcohol. <laughs> Though, do you really want to be casting in front of all these people? No. Not really. Well, maybe. It depends. We know that big, big ol' wizards run the society. Yeah, but do we want their attention? No, we don't. Uh, that said, Last is going to start looking around for places that we could probably hide if we can't get to that indicated location before it starts getting dark. Yep, you can roll either a survival or perception checks to find a location that you think will work as somewhat shelter. Uh, uh how does a 32 sound for perception? I'm surprised you didn't do a survival. Missed my response. It's lower. Oh. Uh, well, that's an 11 on survival. I really need to be using my remember ability more. Use it now? It takes 10 minutes. Oh. Yeah. To to invoke the remember... Because it lasts for like an hour per level. But it gives me uh, levels worth of ranks and a skill. I see. Yes. You, you guys go ahead and you begin to search around. And it's not an easy task to find a good place to necessarily hide. The architecture here... It isn't great. You don't think it's intentionally hostile. You think it's just hostile because it's just not exactly always the best built. Thankfully enough, one of you has to roll above a bloody 30 and I get to go, well, you guys do find a back alley where after a, a little bit of looking around, you find that there's a hole that will lead into what you think is an abandoned or a part or a, at least a partially abandoned building. If you keep the entrance covered well enough, people might not even know you're here. Spectacular. Granted, the building's also partially collapsed, so... Eh. Eh. It's a city. City happens. Shitty happens. Eh. So, um... Vret is going to um, uh, scribble out the suggestion of um, so now we wait until dusk. Will we be playing heroic vigilantes, taking out the various serial killers and stealing all of their stuff? Vret um, does finger guns at uh, Dr. Volt. Last is looking concerned at that suggestion. Last isn't sure if he should be proud or concerned. Right. Then for now, I suppose I will help shore up the defenses of this place. And he's going to spend ten minutes. And then get ranks and survival so he can help shore up this building. Yeah, feel free to roll survival to shore up the building and put up defenses. If that is what y'all want, everybody's free to roll. Uh, let's see. Or build camp, because it sounds like this is where you guys are camping. That's a, yeah, pretty much a 23 to build camp. Nice. Anybody else wishing to assist? Uh, I can, uh, I can guidance. Okay. I don't really, I mean, uh, uh would so... rolling a survival, would, like, doing an eight another survivor roll help? Yeah, I can, yes. Depending on what you get, I do incrementals, remember? 27. So, plus four, got it. So, plus five to whatever Key said. Uh, so that'll be a 28. Uh, can paint help? 
Yes, he may. And I suppose Dr. Volt will attempt to help as well. Yeah, this is a Never this is mind, a group no, he thing. won't. Oh. 19. Got it. Uh, this is survival, you said? Yes. Fret's survival is garbage. So, um, Fret has another thing that he's going to be preparing um, for uh, when fun times happen. Oh boy, go ahead and send it to me in message if you don't want to say it out loud. Okay. Um, well, Fret is going to slip away from the rest of the group. And, uh... Oh dear. Uh, is going to activate a new ability of his. Oh no. Well, let me... Fox copy. Thief Brand, thank you very much for that follow. <laughs> there was half okay, a moment so there. Fred, Fred's gonna activate this, Era. Um, in order to... Uh... Um... Change his disguise slightly. To, uh... Just be, uh... Um, just a counter that uh, looks kind of destitute, um, and uh, is gonna go hang out in the alley up near where uh, the exit of this place is. Okay. For when me... dusk arrives. Yep. Let me read this here. Are you being bait? <laughs> exactly. Okay, uh, perhaps Fret should communicate this. Uh, Fret will, uh, uh, your bonded mind communicate to his shoulders, because you're within 140 feet. What's oh, shoulders, uh, uh, what shoulders I... done setting up camp, then, uh, He's gonna do a thing. Oh. What is that thing? Uh, that thing is he's going to hide because we, we're gonna have the uh, entrance like slightly covered or whatever so people can't see it, right? I believe that was your intent, yes, because you guys specifically said hide. What are we covering it with? Probably trash bins. Trash bins, junk, boards, perhaps panels if there's like, you know panels of building that we can just take. Cool. Uh, I will be stealth checking behind them. Roll your stealth. And, uh... Bet. Yeah, Fret will be out in the alleyway, like, just sitting up against a wall with his, um, sitar out. Gotcha. I am make stealth! Yeah, make sure to write down that number for next time, because we're gonna need that number for next time. Oh, boy. Uh, Anything the else... Number, in... The number, by the way, is, uh... 38. Yeah, it's, it's stupid high. I, I'm aware. <laughs> Hold on. Anybody else want to take extra precautions? Well, apparently uh, one of your party members has decided to throw themselves out as bait. Um. I, I can guidance myself, 39. Uh, I forget the exact name of it, but you know those little, like, holes in castle walls that archers... Portcullises. Uh, no, that no, it is not a portcullis. Murder holes. The murder hole. Uh, yeah, last is gonna create uh, a number of murder holes. Oh, I used the wrong word. What the fuck's wrong? Oh, like with the me? little arrow slit things. Yes. Uh huh. It's not a portcullis. It's a arrow slit. Yeah, a number exactly of what I call. I was I was about to say. I think they are literally just arrow slits. Yeah. 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 He's just gonna. I don't know why it's a portcullis. He's just going to create a number of arrow slits if there aren't already good places for him to aim out of. I need you to do me a favor and roll... Do you... You don't have any sort of architectural skills or stone crafting or anything, correct? Oh, lord. Uh, no, he I, doesn't. I need you to roll me a percentile so I can determine what material this building is made out of. Because I wasn't expecting this... Seventy-two. It is actually stone. Ah. 
So you'd be better off maybe just popping out on the roof. Because the roof is just sheet metal. You could probably press it up if you tried. Oh. Yes, of course. He's going to, uh... In, in that case, he's just going to rig up a, um... A hatch that he can just easily, like, open. Do you have any form of applicable craft that will work here? Disable device will also be applicable, or are you rolling a survival? If Choose only there were one. someone here who were really, really good at doing things like crafting and disabling devices. Um, <laughs> he said I, I am doing, so I have to go on what he says. True. Last, he, plus last ask for help. Last is trying to be useful. So if, if he fails, he will probably need to ask for help. Oh boy, that is not a good survival. That is... Uh, plus, that's a 16. I mean, it will do. It's not the greatest, but it will work. Why do I feel like last is going to look at his handiwork and be like, okay, this is fine. I can work with this. And then he's going to move away and Dr. Volt's going to see it and be offended. I mean, Dr. Volt roll of perception? Or percep... Yeah. Um, Dr. Volt has rolled a hell of a perception. Uh, 29. I mean, it'll work. It's up to you, you whether or not you care more than it'll work, but it, it'll work. It is definitely one of those rough edge, I did what I can in a survival situation style hatches, but it'll work. It is up to Dr. Volt if he cares or not. Eh, Dr. Volt's working on something anyway. Paint, do you want to do anything? Seems people are getting well, ready for a fight. These are ruins, right? Well, it's a partially collapsed lake building of some form. You're not entirely sure what it was, but it was definitely a stone house and definitely had a sheet metal roof at one point. Okay. Has nature done what it typically does and uh, overtaken it at all? I.e., is there a tree? Not yet. You're not in the part of the city that's going to have a tree for a bit. Oh, okay. Trust me, when you guys get to town center or ever move towards the center of the city where people are more likely to have money, you might see some trees out there or if you guys leave the city entirely. This isn't necessarily a good place, unfortunately, so nature isn't exactly uh, high on their list. So please do sound me uh -oh. what the heck you're going to do in private, because now I'm just curious. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, important question is, uh, what element is um, Rex currently? Well, paint and Rex. Uh, that is a great yeah. question. But Rex is the tell. That's why we ask about Rex. Yeah. Uh, fire. Ooh. Oh, we're going to do Good. a little arson. Fun times. <laughs> Well, all right then. Okay. I have sent Paint's plan. Oh, um... Oh, dear. Also, uh, Dr. Volt is uh, going to be slightly retooling uh, the idea he had earlier. Okay. Uh, instead of uh, the idea being to... Um, have the crows steal shit for us, since we're not going to be having lodgings for tonight anyways. Lookouts. Ah. Send me the link to the spell, and then we'll, we'll start crossing bridges when we start crossing bridges, because 
unless anybody has any other prep for this particular thing, I think I'm going to call it here as a good place to stop before uh, a lot of stuff happens. Uh, Fred is going to uh, uh, cast a cantrip over and over and over as needed. Um, but it's ten minute duration of um, uh, Oath of Anon uh, an yeah, Anonymity. Um, which gives him a plus ten to his disguise to be a nameless hobo. Oh boy. We'll cover all this next week. Okay, or not next week, well, two weeks from now. Yep. Just make notes of your guys' disguises on your character sheets, please. So that way when those actually come up and you're in an er or in a different situation, I can call upon them and roll against them. Asher adorable. So is Zim. Uh, and make sure to also notate any so other roles that you guys currently seven. have active. As far as I'm aware, I've got your survival listed. The small place that you have for crashing out tonight is actually somewhat stable and okay, all things considered, so we're not going to worry about it. I will roll the environmental hazards right. later. Yeah, I think this is a good place to stop, elsewise. I had, a, I had a perfect spell that would have been great for being a lookout spell for our exact current situation if it weren't for the fact that it were rounds per level. Yeah, rounds oh. per It was detect madness because serial killers are very, well, very rarely of... seen. Or er, seen? Sane. <laughs> <laughs> It affects this particular city, considering the way that they are. But let's see. What? Who do I want to raid? Okay, I'm going to go and do I'm outro out. stuff. I have uh, one yeah. one more question, though. Yeah? Uh, Fred um, is going to, uh, um, at one point, pull out his katana and check it. And see if it's changed any. Not yet. Okay. Don't okay. worry about that quite yet. Uh, really quickly, okay. uh, who did I cause the most stress tonight? Hmm. Hmm. Viv, flip the table. <laughs> Sweet. All right, let me get a rate up. I'm going to go ahead and do a closeout, and then you can close yourself out, Zim, as you need to. And uh, Zim, again, thank you for those extra biddies. Vari, thank you for that. No earlier. I... <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe. Yeah. Alright everyone, I've decided midway through this stream that we're going to have a new segment for randomizer related uh, stuff. And that is what I'm going to call the Blue Review. Patent pending. Uh, great. So, what we're going to do is we're going to just do a quick review of every vital item we got in today's stream. Because, like, this can't hurt, right? This is, like, something that's definitely going to just help in the long run. Okay, we got the Traveling Merchant showing up on the Monday in Stardew Valley. Redlander for Guardian Legend. A pagey for ukulele, a child of moonlight for blasphemous. A chunk of time shards for the messenger. Sword upgrade for pseudo regalia. Mine elevator for Stardew, another pagey. Another booster pack of special monsters that might even contain several of the monsters that uh, are checks when we pull. 
Steel Sword for Mystic Quest. Not sure how useful that'll be, considering we have Excalibur already. This is not marked as essential, but hey, the body upgrade for Mega Man X3, I think that means we take half damage. Stone Tablet Fragment for Ender Lilies. Some Crystals for an Untitled Story. Master Key for Explorer's Crypt and Oracle of Seasons. A pat Wood Path Recipe for Stardew. A White Door for Astalon. Spatula for Spongebob. Another Mine Elevator. We have tripled our Mine Elevator. Timepiece for a Hat in Time. We need a few more of those to access a new area, because the one area it decided to give us for our second one was the fucking one that requires the three different hats to actually allow you to even enter. Dagger upgrade in Stardew. Bonus coin in DKC3. A gem piece in Wario Land 4. Life upgrade in Blasphemous. Farming level in Stardew. Metro ticket blue for a hat in time. That'll be nice if we get to Nyakuza Metro ever. 100 rupees for Link's Awakening DX. Smarts with Kent. Another blue lander. Knuckles' ability to dig in Sonic Adventure 2. Small key for Bottle Grotto. Heart container for Legend of Zelda, so we're less squishy. Mana up for Rogue Legacy. <coughs> Gem piece for Warrior Land 4. A level for Dank Nankum. Queen Fragment for Hollow Knight. Great Slash for Hollow Knight. Another chunk of shards. Some rep for Bomb Rush. So that's today's blue review. Let's see who's online. Thank you for being here. Stay cute, everyone. Mwah.